it's time once again to go racing. It does not get any better than this. The pressure is really on now. Yes, it's pole position. Lights out and we're racing in BSGL. The first lap has been absolute chaos. What an overtake. I've never seen anything like it. Side by side again. This will be settled right at the end. everyone and welcome along we've been waiting an awful long time PSGL is back it's the opening race of the PC season and it's bound to be a cracker I'm Ginger Addy and I've got Dan Field alongside me to take us through this season we'll be going across the continents across the globe from track to track as we look in search of yet another PSGL PC champion. With the Invitational last week, we had drama all the way to the finish, and it was Barry Buraman that came out on top. Can he continue his fine start to 2022 as we arrive in Portimao for the opening race of the season? Dan, here we are. It's been a long, long time coming. We've waited so long. Finally, it's time for that opening race. Absolutely, and what a circuit to start it off, where we finished in season 29. Now it's the first race of season 30 at Portimao. Brilliant circuit, broken ground in 2008, hosted the 2009 F1 pre-season testing, and of course hosted its first race in 2020. It's a brilliant circuit. A lot of the drivers love it, but it is very challenging. It's certainly going to be a difficult one for them today. Yeah, it sure is. 15 turns on this racetrack, and it's up and down, blind corners everywhere. But I've really enjoyed it in league racing, I have to say. When Formula 1 first went there in real life, Dan, I was a bit sceptical. Was there any ways you can make an overtake or anything like that? But I actually found it really enjoyable, that first race in real life and in esports. Plenty of action down into that first corner and in the middle sector. Plenty of areas on the racetrack where the drivers can go side by side. So it's the perfect place to open this brand new PSGL season. And let's take a look then at the season ahead. Let's have a look at the calendar, first of all, for the season ahead. And there it is. We had the placements last week. We formed the grid. And of course, we start off in Portugal tonight. A one week's time, we'll go to Silverstone. We've got Monaco in there, France, Hungary, Austria, Saudi Arabia. Belgium, the Netherlands, Brazil, Mexico, Singapore, USA, Italy, and Bahrain. 15 rounds ahead of the drivers, Dan, and uh, some real vintage Formula One classic racetracks in there, isn't there? Absolutely. It really does take the old classic circuits and then uh, really builds them in with the new ones. I'm really looking forward to how this season plans out over these next few months, all the way up into the uh, May, into May for Bahrain. Normally, of course, the uh, the start of the season, and now uh, it is it is right to the end. I, I cannot wait for this season. I mean, it's uh, it's been a long time coming. I believe it's gone about what like 108 days, 106 days, or something like that, uh, without a PSGL F1 PC race. Of course, with the Invitational last week, and that was a uh, insane bout at China. So I'm really looking forward to how this season pans out. Okay, I can see that there uh, appears to be some issues with some lag. So what we're going to do is we're going to restart the stream and hopefully we can get things sorted out. Um, so I'm just going to just give us a minute, folks. Uh, this seems to be taking a bit of a strain on the Wi-Fi or something along the lines. So we'll be back in just a jiffy and we're going to try and restart the stream and get things working properly. So we'll be back in no time at all. Apologies for um, the disruption we have at the minute. So we'll be back. It's time, once again, to go racing. It does not get any better than this. The pressure is really on now. Yes, it's pole position. Lights out and we're racing in BSGL. The first lap has been absolute chaos. What an overtake. Oh, no. I've never seen anything like it. 
side by side again. This will be settled right at the end. Welcome back folks to the action, apologies for that brief delay, hopefully that has sorted the lag issues out. I am back, Ginger Andy here with Dan Field for the action and you've only missed a few moments of the start of qualifying Q1, where of course most drivers head out on a set of the intermediate tyres. So we're here at Portimao for the opening race of the season uh, and it should be a cracker, we've got a few drivers out on track and the first lap time of the entire season is being set right now by Alessio Di Capua and he goes quickest of all with a 1 minute 16.705 on the medium compound of tyres. Dan, three sessions ahead of his Q1, Q2 and Q3, unlike last week where we only had one for the Invitational, three sessions, the pressure on all the drivers to get out of this first part of qualifying. Absolutely, we are finally in to qualify. We've got Q1, Q2 and Q3 ahead of us. Of course, 18 minutes of Q1, 15 minutes of Q2 and then 12 minutes. The top 10 shootout of Q3. The first lap has already come out from Alessio Di Capua, but I do believe we have some more drivers on runs at the moment. One of them being two-time F1 esports champion Brendan Lee making his official PSGL F1 debut. He's just coming through the final couple of corners now up towards uh, Sagres corner. This is, and it's going to be a flat out run to the line up towards Galp corner. Running it a little wide on the exit there on the medium compound of tie. We'll see where the Ferrari driver stacks up against Alessio Di Capua as he runs short to the line and he's going to cross it here. And Brendan Lee does go top by uh, about three tenths of a second ahead of the Capua. Yeah, welcome back to the world of league racing, Brendan Lee. PSGL debut, as you say, and he starts it in the style you would expect from an F1 Esports two-time back-to-back world champion, Brendan Lee. Quickest of all, 2017-2018 world champion. We've got two back-to-back -back world champions on this grid. The other, Jarno Otmir, and uh, wow, what a mouth-watering uh, grid that is we have here this weekend. We've got Danny Beresny, his teammate, out there as well, the Hungarian driver. And he's on, uh, well, he's on a slow lap. He's actually invalidated the current lap he's on. So we'll, we'll move away from him and see if we can pick someone else out there on the racetrack. Shanaka Clay, 18th at the minute, but, and he is just starting a flying lap. Matthias van Erven's done a lap too, but it's not very representative. A 1 minute 26.694 on the medium compound of tyre. I should say there has been a few changes to the grid tonight from the official uh, lineups. So there's a few reserves swapping. Four in all. Fabrizio Donoso is out uh, tonight for Alpine because he's in Chile. He's in Chile having a little holiday and quite right as well. He's replaced by Dylan Warren. Wilson Hughes misses out tonight for Dario Yumulo. And in Haas, it is John Evans out for Thomas Ronhart. And at Mercedes, Danny Moreno is out for the pad man, Louis Welsh. So four changes to the grid tonight. So if any drivers you were expecting to be there that aren't, that is why they have been replaced with some of the reserves for tonight's uh, action. But here is Shinaka Clay then, making his way down that wonderful final corner, sweeping up towards the start-finish line. And what kind of lap time are we going to see from him as he comes across the line? We're going to see the quickest time of all, a 1 minute 16.3 on a set of the medium compound tyres, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Andy just quickly, uh, I think, dropped the bit rate by another 500, but we are going to keep going in this uh, in this qualifying session here. We do apologise for the issues that we are experiencing. We will get these sorted in due time, in time for the race, but uh, we do continue on this qualifying. I'll give you a little bit of uh, radio commentary as uh, we've got two drivers out on circuit at the moment. We've got uh, Liam Parnell, F1 Esports uh, driver last season, and we've got uh, the young up-and-coming talent of Dylan Warren on an outlap at the moment. In the Red Bull is Liam Parnell. And he's just coming up towards the uh, final corners now to begin his lap. As yeah. uh, out onto the circuit he goes. Here we are. We're going to get a, a, a short little radio commentary of this lap, if you'd like to put it. As now, Liam Parnell onto the main straight to begin this lap on the yellow wall set.
Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, just a little bit of teething issues for us at the minute. First stream of the season, and just trying to find out what suits the PC best. And uh, a few times they're not quite up to the uh, questions I'm asking it to do. And uh, hopefully now that's a bit smoother. Continue to give us feedback, folks, and let us know if there are any further issues. Uh, and if we need to drop it even further, the bitrate, which is, appears to be the issue we think it is at the minute, we will do so. But uh, nine minutes to go in qualifying, and we're back with the action. And uh, we've got some of the top guys out there on an outlap. Danny Beresney is one of them. We've got a few drivers out there on quick laps, and Liam Parnell is one of them, but he's gone and invalidated it. So we'll pick up Dylan Warren just behind him on a lap, currently 17th quickest, replacing Fabrizio Donoso tonight who is, of course, on holiday. So here he goes, Dylan Warren up to the final corner. He's now changed tyres onto a set of intermediates, and he'll be looking to see what he can do as he comes up towards the line now. And Dylan Warren on the medium compound tyre. Where can he go? It's not a quick lap. It's only a 128.734, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. He goes fifth of them all. Of course, on the medium compound tyre, we've only got five drivers who have set laps. Uh, in Q1, we've only got eight minutes to go, so a lot of these drivers taking it very easy in this qualifying session. We do have a, uh, an Alpha Tauri of Dario Yamulo on a run at the moment. He's just coming through uh, Samsung corner now, off towards Craig Jones. Of course, uh, the late great Craig Jones in the corner has been named after him. That's turn number nine, up towards turn 10 now. Dario flies on the downhill portion of this circuit. He's looking pretty quick at the moment here. As, uh, He's got the Alpine car of uh, Simon Weigang that is just in front. Probably going to give him a slight toe, actually, I'd imagine, down into uh, the start-finish straight. As he comes up towards Galp Corner now, off the exit of the final turn. Here comes Dario Yamulo. He's going to be the next one to finish up his run. He's going to cross the line, go quickest of them all with the 1 minute 16.154. Yeah, Dario Yamulo then, 1 minute 16.154. A few people still saying we're having issues with this I've got to really apologize folks it was fine last week we made a few adjustments to try and make it run smoother and it appears it's done the exact opposite I'm going to try one more thing folks we've only got six times on the board so we've not really missed too much of the main action so I'm going to give this one more go uh, to try and reduce the issues we're having uh, so bear with us folks for the final time hopefully uh, we're going to have to try and fix this so give us a few few moments people Welcome back, folks. Hopefully this time, fourth time lucky, it's a little bit smoother. Give us your feedback. But we are back for the closing stages of this first round of qualifying. At the minute, the bottom five are as follows. It's Shinaka Clay, Dylan Warren, Louis Welsh, Liam Parnell and Ruben Pedreño that are down there at the minute. And they need to get some lap times in. And Dylan Warren is out there at the minute on an outlap. So let's have an, keep an eye on him as he makes his way around that final corner in the Alpine and up towards the start-finish line to begin his first flying lap of qualifying. So here, well, it's not his first lap, his final flying lap of qualifying. So here we go then, 1 minute 16.5, his best time so far. He needs to find three times to get into 15th, but you feel everyone else out there will be looking to improve, and Dylan Warren has already invalidated that lap right at the very start, and that is not good in any way, shape or form. He's going to have to crawl round with the fuel he's got and save the tyres and hope and pray he's got enough fuel to do another lap right at the death down. So he's under big pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, Dylan Warren on the verge of being eliminated in Q1. He's been joined by Shinaka Kalei, Louis Welch, Liam Parnell and Rum Pedreño. Pedreño is on a run at the moment. He's just currently down in P20. Both Red Bulls have not set a lap at this point. Coming down through Sam Sun corner and up towards Craig Jones is Ruben Pedreño. We'll see what he can do through the second sector split where he's just about to run up now. Alessio de Capua getting out of the way. Very nice indeed as down on 
into this uh, downhill part of the circuit. The second sector split for Pedreño as he backs off here, actually. Yeah. I think he's going to go for a final one. So uh, a lot of these drivers at the lower part of the grid are struggling. But Louis Welch, he's uh, he's going very quick at the moment. Yeah, he is out there and he needs to go quickly, does the pad man in the Mercedes. Needs to find a lap time that can move him up the order. Currently 18th, no representative time. That 128 miles off where he needs to be as he now makes his way towards the highest point of the circuit. Sweeps back down the hill on this circuit that really is like a roller coaster ride and it shows up purple through the middle sector for Louis Welch. Thomas Ronhart has retired from the session. He's happy with that 1 minute 15.762, enough to put him third quickest. But here comes Louis Welsh, needs to deliver a lap right at the very end of the session. Is it going to be enough to move him up at the field and into the top 10 or into the top 15 at the very least? Louis Welsh up to the line. Where does he go? He goes fourth quickest and that should see him through. Yeah, absolutely. He's done really nice indeed there. I do believe that we are going to lose a few drivers at this point because Rune Pedreño is uh, pulled off to the side at turn number one. He's going to be out of this qualifying session, but a couple drivers are finishing up on runs. Josh Idowu, uh, Josh Idowu uh, has gone purple through the sec through the first sector. And he's green through the second sector. Shinaka Clay as well in the Aston Martin down in 17th. He's going very quick. Idowu up to the line. Where's he going to go? Second ahead of his teammate, Barry Boroman. But we really do need to watch Shinaka Clay at, the, at this point because he's coming through the final few corners on the verge of elimination. Yeah, here he goes then. Shinaka Clay up towards the final corner, hugging the curb like his favourite grand as he heads towards the lane. Can Shinaka Klee move up from 16th place? He can go fastest of all from the bottom five to the very top of the timing sheets and he knocks Yoni Tormala into qualifying trouble and he's 500s up on his previous best is Yoni Tormala. He needs a big lap time and I think, yes, that's Matthias van Erven at the final corner wasting his final attempt to qualify. He is out of the section regardless of what everyone else does. So here is Yoni Tormala then. The finish driver needs a big lap to climb out of the bottom five. Daryl Yumulo, his teammate is in there too. He needs a lap time. Van Erven's out, Petrenio's out, Warren is out. What can Yoni Tormala do? He goes 14th and is in by a very, very small margin. And Yumulo is going slowly, he is out. So that settles the bottom five in qualifying. And Daniele Haddad drops out with Yumulo, Van Erven, Warren and Ruben Petrenio. What an end to a qualifying session. Despite all the issues, we seem to get all the best action right at the end. Unfortunate to be losing those five drivers, but the top 15 all moving through to the next session. Danny Beresney tops uh, Q1 in his Ferrari. His teammate, Brendan Lee, down in 12. Both of those drivers making their PSGL debuts today as uh, it, we're just waiting for all the drivers to be serviced in the pit. I think it's just the Red Bull of, uh, of Rum Pedreño. I've seen some five-place grid penalties come up for whatever reason. And I think the main one is Jake Benham here. Oh. Five place grip penalty for 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 blocking him, but they're all on they're all AI controlled, so I'm a little bit confused what's going on there. So that's a bit of a disaster then for Jake Benham, a slap in the wrist, but uh, five place penalty, well they're all AI controlled, that's uh, not ideal at all, is it? So Jake Benham then with a five place penalty we think to carry forward. Danny Beresney, quickest of all in the first part of qualifying it's all about Q3 though but it's all about just getting through from this session and that's exactly what the top 15 have done Danny Beresney quickest of all and there is the confirmation as you say Jake Benham second in the field but with a five place grid penalty not ideal at all Shanaka Clay third for Aston Martin Alvaro Caraton fourth Josh Idawu Jano Watmir Barry Buramad Liam Parnell in eighth and Thomas Ronhar ninth Louis Welch is tenth with Vigang eleventh and Brendan Lee twelfth De Capua also got a penalty Yoni Tormala Thymen Schutter at the bottom five there they are Daniele Haddad Daniel Yumulo Matthias van Erven and I think Ruben Pedreño and Dylan Warren were the other two to drop out of qualifying. So a bit of a disaster for those drivers. But uh, what an end to that qualifying session that was, Dan. Pretty epic stuff. And uh, Danny Beresney proved to be the man to be quickest of all going through. Absolutely, but we do have to commend uh, some other drivers there. Both McLarens right at the top of the order. They were in a really good position coming into this one. So they are certainly ones to beat in terms of the team standings. But of course, Q1, that's all wiped now aside from the drivers who are locked in, who, who have uh, been knocked out in the first session. That's where they'll be starting. But it's all variable from this point onwards. So we just need to watch out for who gets to into Q3 and of course, who's going to set pole later on. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. This is really the session. We'll start to see some strategy decisions. Well, 
some go for the mediums, will some go for the softs? It remains to be seen what the drivers go out on, but it should be a very exciting session. And it might give us a few tips as to who's looking good for pole position uh, very, very soon. So let's get back out there then. Let's go to the racetrack. Some of them are out there already on their outlaps. The first man out on track, the man that was quickest of all in Q1, Danny Beresny, the Hungarian driver chasing uh, pole position in the first race of the PSGL uh, PC season. What can he do then on his outlap? Well, he's uh, currently the first driver out on circuit number 12 in that Ferrari. It's just got the uh, Alpha Tauri of, I think, Yoni Tormala just in behind him as well. So it's really, uh, it is really brilliant to see uh, all these esports drivers in PSGL and especially the likes of Beresnay and uh, Brendan Lee making their debuts this season. So uh, at the top of the order as well. So it, it is really lovely as uh, coming through towards that Sagres corner. Danny Beresnay, he'll be the first one, the Hungarian driver, to set us on a Q2 lap. He's just uh, going slowly here to try and get one of the best runs out of uh, turn number 10 here. And here he goes. Danny Beresnay is going to be the first driver to set us on a lap here. Yep, just going to give you an update on Daniele Haddad. He had a, his, log his lobby was bugged, and to him it was raining. So uh, a bit of a strange one there. So a little bit of an issue with his game has cost him dear. Raining for him, so obviously that makes him slower. And he drops out in... Uh, the first part of qualifying, just seen that pop up on Twitter there, so a bit of a shame for him. Danny Beresny, by the way, has invalidated that lap in the opening couple of corners. Easy to do around here, isn't it, Dan? Because those first couple of corners, they come up very quickly, easy to cut the inside or run a little bit wide on the exit of turn one. So we'll move away from him and go to the sole remaining Alpha Tauri, which is Yoni Tormla, just behind him in the road. And he was very strong last week, second at the end of the Grand Prix behind Barry Burman. Fine performance in China in that Invitational. He'll be looking to carry that forward, but he has also gone and invalidated. But despite that, Dan, he'll be looking to build on what was a really good showing last week. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was a great race that we did witness between all the drivers. As I'm watching uh, all the laps come through, they're all invalidating on them. But uh, yeah, Yoni Tormala did really well last week, fighting with uh, Wilson Hughes, his teammate for this season. Of course, not racing today, replaced by Dario Yamula, of course, uh, preparing for challengers. It is, uh, I'd say that is definitely his priority. A lot of future stars in PSGL, mixing it in with uh, the greats of today. But I do believe we have some runs coming out. We've got a purple middle sector from Shanaka Clay, and he's just coming through uh, turn number 13, I believe, up towards 14 here. So he's looking very nice at the moment, as coming off of the final braking zone and on towards the Galp corner. Flat out through here, hugging the inside line, then keeping it tight. Alessio de Capua goes off on the median, but Janaka Clay cross the line with a 1 minute 15.820 uh, to set us on our first proper lap of the session. Yeah, Janaka Clay then, 15.8. Louis Welsh goes second quickest on a 16-2, and then Simon Vagang pops across the line and goes quicker still. Who else we got out there? Liam Parnell up to the line. He has invalidated the lap he's currently on. What about Barry Burman? He's coming into the pits on this lap. So as you said, several drivers invalidating their laps. What about Alvaro Caraton? He's also invalidated their lap, his lap, and uh, this track proving to be one that bites on the lap time invalidations. They'll need to be careful in the Grand Prix because too many corner cuts will lead to time penalties. And in a field this close, this tight, that is going to cost you a bucket load of points and positions, Dan, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. These drivers really do need to have that consistency around the circuit and uh, keep it clean because you can't get anywhere by cutting all the corners. And uh, given how this qualifying session has gone so far, we've seen so many laps go down the drain. Uh, it really has, it really is on show as uh, I believe, though, so Jana Watmir, the ever so popular two-time uh, PSGL champion, is coming no. up to the line, and he baits us. He comes into the pit lane. It uh, wasn't a quick lap from the Dutchman, so uh, he probably made a mistake somewhere along the line. As uh, Liam Parnell, he's invalid as well, so we're in a little bit of a low period at the moment, aside from Jake Benham beginning yeah. his lap on the mediums. Yeah, Jake Benham then, out there on the medium compound of tyre, about to start a flying lap around this wonderful circuit here in Portimao. Up to the line he goes, then five place penalty to his name, whether it was his fault or not, well, remains to be seen, but here he goes flying through turns one and two. Little bit of a rear end slide there as he moves in to the third corner, really tight 
Very important to get a good exit because you need to slingshot your way up the hill through turn four and then they're charged down to Tory Vip. The bottom of the hill, break just after that 100 meter board, swing into the left hander. A very good place to try and make an overtaking move in the race. Now up through the hill, turn six, not really a corner, easy flat to Formula One car, then sweep into turn seven, downhill, then back up the hill for turn eight. Watch the rear doesn't slide, it does a little for Jake Benham and then he goes back sweeping downhill into this long left hander. I've seen a few moves here in my time, very, very difficult place to make a move, but if you can make it work, it is very, very impressive. Then down the hill he goes again, through turn nine, and then on towards turn, sorry, through turn 12, and towards the end of the lap now, 13, and now 14, it's a grey corner, and then only turn 15 left for Jake Benham, as he makes his way now up towards the line, in the Alfa Romeo, through that wonderful corner, hugging the inside, all the way up to the line. Is he going to take the shortest route? He sure is. Jake Benham over the line, and it's a 16-1 on the medium tyres. Three tenths quicker than what De Capua did on the same tyre. So a pretty strong effort there from Jake Benham. Yeah, absolutely. I was looking at his uh, sector times. He was only about a tenth off of uh, Louis Welch, who's quickest in sector one, then about two tenths off of Shanika Clay, and then only about five hundredths off of uh, Simon Weigang, who was quickest in Sector 3. A really impressive time on the set of the mediums from, from Jake Benham, and I think he benefited from all that clean air that he got. He was the only driver out on circuit when he was setting his lap. Now he's got uh, a whole heap of drivers keeping him company on their out laps. I believe the furthest one up is uh, Danny Berezny, uh, beginning his lap. The Hungarian driver coming through the final corner now. Why don't we get a lap of uh, this Ferrari driver coming? up towards the start finish line to begin this lap on the set of the soft compound of tyre on the run up towards turn number one the downhill segment of the circuit the ever undulating Portimao really does like to test the limits of the car in towards the braking zone to turn number three and now then the uphill climb through turn number four tricky on the traction make sure you're light and feather with it as always a little bit slightly there on the exit but he seems to do very nice indeed he is purple through the first sector down into Torre Vips the hairpin of this circuit and off the exit on the run up towards the next double right hander of turn seven and eight Jan Ortmir getting out of the way on the right hand side Side of Danny Berezne, who's now slinging the car through Sam Sung corner, turn number eight, and on the hill up, and then all the way back down through turn number nine of of Craig Jones. Really nice indeed from Danny Berezne so far, quickest in sector one by about uh, three thousandths of a second. He's not gone quickest in sector two, but he is right on the cusp of going quicker than Shanika Clay. As now coming down into the uh, into the final part of the circuit, off the final braking zone, he comes. Here goes. Danny Beresne out of the final corner to Galp. He goes off the exit, hugging it tight to the inside. The Ferrari car, the prancing horse, crossing the line. What's it going to be for Danny Beresne? He goes quickest with a 1 minute 15.672. Lovely lap indeed from the Hungarian. Yeah, Jarno Watmir behind him on the road. It was a 16 2, but he must have invalidated that lap. So he'll have to go again, Well, Jarno. So a bit of pressure on him. And it looks like he's going to go straight for another run on this tyre, no recharge happening from him, he's going for it, Simon Vagang still third, but Danny Beresney lowering the time by a good tenth and a half, so a good effort there from the Hungarian driver, who was quickest in the first part of qualifying, and here goes Jarno Otmia, quickest through the first sector, now he is lighting up the time sheets in purple, the Flying Dutchman going for it, as Simon Schutter has gone fourth quickest on a one, a one minute 15.9 then, as we keep an eye on Jarno Otmir going through turn eight and beginning the uphill and then downhill swoop to through turn nine. Absolutely flying. The Mercedes stuck to the racetrack like glue as he goes through turns 10 and 11. At the highest point of the racetrack, oh, a little bit wide, almost invalidating by using so much of the curb. Sparks flying off the back of the Mercedes as he now makes his way to the final few corners of the lap. Through 13, now the long winding turn number 14. You've got to be patient on the throttle here. Just edge it out onto the curb using all the racetrack he can get away with. And now through that long sweeping right hander of turn 15, the Mercedes engine singing as he comes up to the line. Jarno Otmir goes third quickest behind Shinaka Clay, who's just gone quickest. Perez the second and Otmir now third. Yeah, absolutely. And I was watching uh, Yoni Tomala on his run. He spun out the final corner and he was looking to challenge uh, he was looking to challenge Jarno Otmir. But unfortunately it's turned out that way. We do have Brendan Lee though in Q2 coming through turn number nine. Not yet set a lap, and I believe he might be a bit low on fuel. So I think uh, Brendan Lee's going to back out here, uh, come off of that lap, and uh, possibly come back into the pit lane 
fit a new fresh set of the softs or probably a scrub set as well maybe and uh, go once again but a lot of drivers struggling to get in laps we still have uh, the likes of Josh actually Barry Boromand, uh, Thomas Ronha, uh, Johnny Tormel and Brendan Lee all four of those drivers on the cusp of going out in qualifying they've only got four minutes and a half left to go if they can't get out in time they'll be out already yeah they will be in trouble Barry Boromand needs a lap and he's coming up to the lane now he goes eighth quickest on the medium tyre so that's a good time for a medium tyre quickest of all the medium tyre runs we've seen so far what can Josh Iribo do he's behind him in the road he's bailing out of that run on the mediums and he comes into the pit lane so game over for him as I think Simon Vagang was crossing the line but he's also bailed out into the pits Thomas Ronhard though, he goes quickest of all on the soft compound tyre. Thomas Ronhard delivering here in PC. A 1 minute 15.598, the one, the first man into the 1.15.5s. Well, that's a turn up for the books. Ronhard flying. Yeah, criminal that that man didn't make uh, challenges. Uh, I think the rules weren't clear enough for him and uh, for anyone really. And uh, he was sort of robbed of the opportunity. And I think a lap like that, that really does prove him to be worthy of challengers uh, competition but uh, lo and behold he is here today and uh, he is setting a beautiful lap ahead of the rest by about half a second uh, it's, it's no it's no small margin when you get to the top of uh, of league racing in PSGL F1 so I'd say that is a lap to be proud of for Thomas Ronha we do have a couple more drivers coming out for out laps I believe I think the first one who's going to be able to set a lap will be Jake Benham Okay, so Jake Benham, let's pick him up then. Three minutes to go in qualifying. Did set his initial lap time on the medium compound tyre, but as you can see now, he's had enough of those. He's strapped on a set of the red walled soft tyre. So the strategy for many of the drivers has been to go medium. Let's have a look and see if Barry Burramand and Alvaro Canaton, Louis Wells, Josh Idabu, will they stick with that medium tyre and, you know, sacrifice grid position for the medium tyre in the Grand Prix. Let's wait and see if they think that's the best thing to do for strategy or will they all jump ship onto a set of the soft compound. Alvaro Canaton's left the pit lane. Let's have a look briefly what he's gone for. He is gone for, come on, show me. He's gone for soft, so there you go. Soft for him. So they all seem to be jumping back onto a set of soft compound tyres. So let's keep an eye then on Jake Benham as he comes around the final corner and begins a flying lap here at this Portimao circuit. The first race of the PC season. What can he do to get that car into the final part of qualifying and contest for pole position, Dan? Absolutely flying through turn number one and already oh. an invalidation out of the exit of turn at number one. I'm just going to quickly check Taz now. He does have a, about two laps of fuel left. It's going to be very touch and go as to whether uh, Jake Benham, who finished fourth last season, uh, really is a hot prospect in league race. It's going to be touch and go as to whether he's going to be able to get around for another lap with this fuel load. Yeah, absolutely. Danny Beresney, he's starting a new flying lap now. So let's see what he can do. We've also got... Uh, Yoni Tormala, a bit further round on the racetrack, so we'll pick him up now. He's just gone through the first sector. 21.6 for Yoni Tormala. Looking to go one better than what he did last week. Second in the race. Can he go and take the victory here? The finish driver as he makes his way up the hill in this middle sector. And then sweeping down into turns number seven and eight. So here we go. Through Samsung he goes now. And then on towards Craig Jones. Sweeping down and then back up the hill. And uh, into this blind right hander. So difficult to spot the turn in point, but Yoni Tormala has no issues with it, as I'm sure any of these drivers will have no issues because they are the elite. Uh, I think me and Dan, however, might struggle with it as commentators. I certainly do. I'm not going to speak for Dan. But here is Yoni Tormala uh, through turn number 14. Sagre, and now up towards the final corner, the rear end really all over the place there for Yoni Tormala, sawing away at the wheel, he's currently 14th, pressure on, it's showing the way he was driving, and he bails out and goes into the pits, and that is the end of his qualifying session. Absolutely, it's all over for Yoni Tormala, but the spark is still lit for Brendan Lee, purple in the first sector, he's just come through turn number 9, Craig Jones now up towards turn 10 here, Brendan Lee looking to escape the clutches of uh, the outside, the top 10 positions. He's gone uh, green through the second sector with a, with a 29.3. That's uh, about a tenth off of what Thomas Ronha has done as Simon Vigang goes to the top of Brendan Lee on the cusp of being eliminated in Q2. Currently 15th, he's just got one more fell swoop of the wheel until he has completed this lap, but is it good enough? The clock strike zero, qualifying is over as Brendan Lee crossed the line, fourth position 
for him. That knocks Alvaro Caraton into the bottom five, but he is on a lap indeed at the moment. He's coming through the final few corners, Andy. Yeah, Liam Parnell's on one as well. Let's see what he can do. One minute, 15, seven from him. Will he need to go a little bit quicker? Let's see. He goes up to third quickest. Alessio De Capua right behind him in the road. Alvaro Caraton goes second. He goes to Capua. Can he improve his time? He goes up to sixth position. Now we look for Diamond Shooter. He's right on the bubble uh, as well. He comes up to the line. Jake Benham goes seventh quickest. Diamond Shooter now. Can he get into the top ten? No, he can't. Jarno Otmir, by the way, on the bubble at the minute. And he is not doing a lap. Will he be knocked out by his teammate Louis Welsh? He will! By a fraction of a second, Louis Welch knocks the champion out of qualifying. Barry Buraman crosses the line. He's currently out. He delivers a lap time to go quickest of all, right at the very end when he needed it most. Barry Buraman, 1 minute 15.5, goes quickest. Meanwhile, Louis Welch knocks out his teammate, Jarno Otmir, from qualifying. He was going to get knocked out anyway because what Barry Buraman did, and that means both Mercedes are out of the session. Wow, what a finish that is. A disaster down at the Mercedes garage. Both of their drivers out of qualifying. I think the big news here is certainly Jarno Otmir being 12th in qualifying out in Q2. He's been joined by uh, his teammate Louis Welch, Timon Shooter, Josh Idowu, and Yoni Tormala. He could not hook up a lap today. He really just, he just could not do it. And he is uh, starting 15th position without a time on the board in Q2. Well, oh, disaster for Yoni Tormala, real disappointment for him, as we mentioned, very strong last week in the Invitational, started 2022 with a bang, was looking to build on that, has failed to do so, he's out of qualifying without even registering a lap in the second part of qualifying. Joshua Dubu, that's a bit of a surprise too, we mentioned in eSports, all, all but one race in eSports last season, he qualified in the final part of qualifying into the Q3 only 14th in the first race in 2022 here in PSGL. Thyman shoots it out, but as you said, Dan, the big story, the reigning champion in PSGL, the reigning two-time F1 Esports champion, also, Jarno Otmir out, P12 is all he can muster up. Did he think that that was going to be safe enough? Perhaps he did, perhaps he didn't, not too sure. He's out, but this man, Barry Buraman, victory last week, pole position last week, Quickest in Q2, can he go quickest again in qualifying three? Let's have a look then at the order. Barry Booman, quickest for McLaren by 300s to Simon Vigang. Then it's Alvaro Caraton in third with Thomas Ronhar, an impressive fourth for Haas. It's fifth for Liam Parnell and sixth for Janaka Clay. Alessio Di Capua is seventh with Jake Benham eighth, both of them carrying five place penalties. Brendan Lee starts ninth and Danny Beresnay is tenth. And there is your bottom five. Louis Welsh, incredibly Jarno Otmir, Thyman Schutter, Yoni Tomla and Josh Adubu. No, no, no time there for Yoni Tomla and he'll be very, very disappointed. Q3 coming up very, very shortly. Dan, it should be absolutely epic. Who are you going for for poll? Everyone in the chat, fire your comments in. Tell us who is going to get pole position in the first PSGL PC race of 2022. Who's going to be the king in Portugal in qualifying? That's a tough one for me. You know what? I'm going to go with Thomas Ronha for pole position in Portimao, but I, I wouldn't put, put it past anyone in Q3 to set a pole lap. Uh, I believe that you know what, mate, Louis Welch and uh, Josh Ado, I think as well, yeah, they were all about a tenth off of uh, Bar Barry Borman, so the gaps are so minuscule and they were eliminated in qualifying so uh, you really do have to be on your A again I think Thomas Ronha uh, switching to PC only like two two three weeks ago he really has uh, impressed and I think he's gonna go all the way in qualifying yeah it's incredible it's incredible isn't it to do that uh, in kind of pace and he's straight into Q3 switching over only two three weeks ago very very impressive what a story that would be Dan if your prediction comes true and he gets pole position, that would be a big surprise, especially for a guy that's a reserve. He's replacing John Evans tonight. That would be an impressive result, a fairy tale story, switching over just a few weeks ago and delivering that. Uh, I think that would, you know, shock the world of esports, wouldn't it? Thomas Ronhardt just coming in and doing a lap like that. Well, it remains to be seen if he can. There's going to be a few challengers in there. Tell us, folks, who do you think will get pole position? I am going to go for Barry Burman. I'm going to be going for a safe bet. I think it's going to be him or Beresney. Not sure, but I'm going to go Buramad. He was so strong last week. He really, really impressed me, Dan. So I'm going to go for him. 
but it's all set for qualifying now. The sandbags are out. If anyone was hiding their pace, this is it. Q3, first race of the season. It's all guns blazing. Who is going to get the pole position to start the season and lead this Grand Prix from lights out? Remember, Jake Benham, Alessio Di Capo, they're both in the top 10. They both picked up five place grid penalties in this qualifying session. So if they're on pole, they will have to drop. Unfortunately, five places. So they will not be getting pole. But there's certainly eight other drivers very, very strong in there that could get it. Simon Vagang showed a turn of pace. Shinaka Clay's been quick as well. But uh, Danny Beresney, Barry Burman, maybe even Alvaro Caraton, one of those three perhaps going for pole position. The drivers at the minute, they're all in the garage. Just counting down the seconds before we see the first few cars on the track. And I think we can now go to the racetrack because I think we do have a few cars making their way out there. And they are Alessio Di Capua and Jake Benham. So let's pick them up then, both the drivers with those penalties. And Di Capua, the first man out there on the racetrack. Absolutely, in the Williams car, I do believe that we are getting a restart after oh. this qualifying session just to get those... Uh, get those penalties out of the way because they are confirmed to be glitched okay. so uh, we are we're getting a restart on this lobby uh, but oh. that does put them in the mix both Alessio Di Capua and Jake Benham puts them into the mix for uh, pole position so 10 drivers going to be scrapping it out today in this session we've only got nine minutes left to go a lot of drivers uh, waited uh, to come out on circuit but now they are going to uh, they're all going to be filing out at the moment we're going to have 10 cars on track very soon yeah, absolutely. So Alessio Di Capua then is going to be the first man to get this qualifying session underway with a hot lap. He's flying out there, coming around the final corner now, turn 15, and he is going to set the Williams on its way. We've got two Williams in the final part of qualifying, he and Alvaro Caraton. And as you just mentioned, Dan, they are free to gun for pole position because there will be a restart at the end of this session. So Di Capua makes his way down the hill into turn one. Look at the commitment you've got to show inside wheel onto that curb and into the second curb. Now, brake hard on that curb on the right hand side for turn three. Now, sweep up the hill, blind corner. Make sure you don't run too wide on the exit, and that is inch perfect from the Capua. And he's flying at the minute. Now, break around 80 meters, swing the car in, hug the inside as hard as you can, then power on the throttle on the exit. Now sweeping up the hill through the left hander of turn six and into turn seven, much like turn one, you've really got to commit on the brakes nice and slow. And now climbing up the hill through turn number eight and then down through Craig Jones, turn nine, that sweeping left hander and then climbing back up hill, spot the breaking point and the turn in point for turns 10 and 11. Impressive stuff from the Capua, keeping it all nice and tidy. Eye of the needle stuff from him as he comes now towards the end of the lap through the slow turn 13 the rather similar long winding turn number 14 get on the throttle as soon as you can extend it right out onto the curb and then head towards the line to complete the lap look at that hugging the inside as much as you can to shave a few meters off then extends out to the end of the racetrack across the line what's the time they've all got to beat it's a 1 minute 15.8 Jake Benham is behind him and he's going quickly as well Dan yeah, absolutely. Just about to come up to the line in the Alfa Romeo car. Here comes Jake Benham crossing the line. It is going to be quicker than Alessio Di Capua for the 1 minute 15.614. But laps still are being put out on circuit. Barry Broman has gone purple through the first sector by quite some margin. It's a 21.572. Uh, and just to put that into perspective, Jake Benham did a 21.629. So Ooh. Barry Broman, pole last week in the Invitational, is absolutely flying. He's coming up towards the turn at number 10 now. Now he's got a Ferrari car just in front of him. That is of Danny Beresney, who is also on a run at the moment. He is not obliged to get out of Burman's way, who has once again gone purple through the second sector. He's about two tenths up on what Jake Benham has done at the moment. As now Barry Burman coming out of the final few corners. Barry, Danny Beresney just in front of him. But the McLaren car now out of the final corner. The papaya orange car coming to cross the line. What is it going to be for Barry Burman? It is original bowl. The 1 minute 15.367 blowing his Q2 time out of the water. What a lap time from Barry Burman. Yeah, what was I saying about the sandbags? Goodness me, that is an, an incredible lap from Barry Burman. Three tenths clear of what we've seen from anybody else so far. That is in another league. What a time from Burman. Even Beresney can't get near it. He's four tenths down. Barry Burman straight out the blocks and the Iranian is absolutely flying. That is going to take some beating. What about Avaro Caraton? Just a hot shot. Hopping a skip and a jump 
from Spain to Portugal. Not quite the home circuit, but near enough. Caraton then up to the line. What can he do? This looks pretty quick. It's enough to go into the front row. A 1 minute 15.534 for Alvaro Caraton. Good effort. Ron Hart's behind him on the road, but he has invalidated, so he's not on a quick lap. Shinaka Clay, though, he is on a quick lap, and he's in that green Aston Martin racing car. Coming up to that final corner, Shinaka Clay, currently eighth quickest. What can he do as he crosses the line now? Goes fourth on a 115.646. Good effort. Absolutely. He's uh, just gone into P4 there behind Jake Benham by about 300 of a second. So the minuscule margins once again coming out in full force. As uh, I'm trying to see who's on a run at the moment. I think we've got Thomas Ronha on a lap at the moment. He's just coming through the first sector split and uh, coming up towards uh, turns number seven and eight here. The man in the Haas on the uphill part of the circuit, which then swoops back down, but an invalidation from Ron Hall. Really unfortunate there, Andy. Yep, so a little bit of a lull in the session then after that explosive few moments in qualifying in Q3 with the fuel dumped out and we said about sandbags being empty, didn't we? Wow, has Barry Burman done that? A 15-3, an electrifying lap time. And you've got to say, two times in this tier is pretty impressive. I know it's still got four minutes to go in qualifying, but to jump straight out the pits, stick a set of red tyres on and do that is pretty impressive from Barry Burnaman. And he could be a force to be reckoned with this season. I noticed in the placements last week, quite a few drivers were tipping him for the title. Uh, uh, well, a few pundits were tipping him for the title. And I believe, Dan, you're one of them. I am one of them indeed. I do think Barry Burnaman is going to be your champion uh, this season. I really think he has been putting in a shift recently, especially uh, in F1 Esports. And then uh, also his performance last week, that just reinforced it for me, really. He is uh, a man on fire at the moment. And I think with that pole lap at the moment, he's quicker in Sector 1 and Sector 2 by about a tenth apiece on both of them. Uh, just a couple of hundred slower than Alvaro Caraton in the third sector. Mm -hmm. uh, he really is looking to be the star attraction at the moment with Otmir down in 12th. It's going to be difficult for him to make the alternate strategy work and get past all of the traffic. But of course, if any man can do a uh, an outside the top 10 run on uh, right to the front of the grid, it's got to be on Otmir. So really, it is anyone's game here. It sure is, as we watch Shinaka Clay be wheeled back into the pits. And as we do that, let's take a look at Simon Weingang, the German driver, exiting the pit lane now. And he is out there looking to improve on that 1 minute 15.8. He is set. This is it, folks. Final few moments of qualifying. A few people contending for pole. You've all told us who you want to fight for pole. We were speaking briefly about the World Championship. Who do we think is going to win? PSGL, PC this season. Barry Burman, a name on many people's lips. Can he topple Jarno Otmir? Uh, let's see what he can do. Barry Burman, certainly going to be one of the favourites. Tell us in the chat, folks, who are you rooting for to win the championship in PSGL this season? And if you're tuning in for the first time, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe as well. We've got a full season of racing action ahead of us. And, uh, well, if you're tuning in for the first time, how can you not love this? Excitement throughout the grid here in the opening qualifying session of the season. It's looking good for Burman at the minute, but never write some of these drivers off. We've got Danny Beresny in there, a seasoned veteran, a reigning champion in Brendan Lee as well. And, uh, yeah, pretty strong grid with some young talents coming through as well. They're really taking it to some of these... Uh, you know, established F1 esports drivers. Let's see what Simon Vigan can do. Just bringing the tyres into the window at the minute on this outlap. We've got Jake Benham, Thomas uh, Ron Hart out there on outlaps, both Ferraris too, as they all slowly start to come out onto the racetrack and show what they can do. So Vigan then, coming round the final corner, he's going to get the final runs in the opening qualifying session of 2022. Underway, Vigan heads for the line and starts a flying lap. Here we go then, up to the line, and just watch the commitment he shows into this first corner here right out to the left sweeping and he knows if he goes wide he invalidates it and that's exactly what we're talking about there you go small margins like that you've got to be so brave so precise and Vigang turn one millimeters in it cuts the corner invalidates the lap Dan and it's down the drain he will get another lap he should just have time to get round yeah absolutely he has got the opportunity to come out once again, he's, only, he's got one minute and 22 seconds to get around and then start another lap. But that means uh, we do have some other drivers on runs at the moment. We can focus on Thomas Ronha being one of them yet to set a lap in Q3. He was really uh, strong in the first set. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I'd imagine uh, after that, a slide like that, a snap of oversteer that he just received, he's going to back off, uh, possibly find another way around the circuit. I'm trying to see who could we find on a run who is improving. Seeming like a lot of these drivers, they're not finding time in these uh, slightly overcast conditions. I know Jake Benham's backed off on a run. Berezne's invalidated. But I think Brendan Lee is on a run here, Andy. Yeah, so let's keep an eye on Brendan Lee. So a few of them falling by the wayside. And Brendan Lee's another to fall by the wayside. He slowed right down, gets out the way of Jake Benham. Did you see he's backed out? Or is he on one? No, he's backed out. So uh, all these drivers pretty much backing out of laps. So let's see if we can pick anyone up that hasn't backed out of a lap. This could be difficult. Liam Parnell, <laughs> if they drive it a pick up, has bailed out of a flying lap. So no joy at the minute. Alvaro Canaton, currently second quickest. He started another, as is Barry Burnamand. And while everyone else is falling by the wayside, Barry Burnamand is setting about extending his margin even further. Half a tenth up on his first sector from the previous lap when he went quickest of all. Barry Burnamand showing them all the way around this Portimao circuit at the minute. The McLaren driver, a flash of orange flying round the racetrack, showing them all how to do it as he sweeps through Craig Jones' corner and up towards turns 10 and 11. Barry Burman absolutely flying with the bit between his teeth. He's in the form of his life, almost a tenth up now on his previous best. It's looking like it could be a 1 minute 15 2 that they're going to be aiming for in a few moments' time. Barry Burman then, through turn number 14, gets on the throttle very early indeed. A beautiful line through there. One corner to go then for Barry Burman. What's the time going to be as he heads up towards the checkered flag. Liam Parnell seen the checkered flag. Barry Burnham sees it now and he extends his margin further into the 115 twos for Barry Burnham. That's the target to aim for. Now Varro Caraton has just crossed the line. He oh. uh, extends his gap at P2. I'm trying to see who we can find at the end of their runs as Shinaka Clay's just crossed the line. He's gone ahead of Alvaro Caraton. Uh, at the moment, Jake Benham looking like he's trying to improve on fifth position. Simon Vigan's crossed the line in fourth. That's immediately been, been stolen by Alessio De Capua. Jake Benham in the Alfa Romeo crossed the line, goes ahead of De Capua. They're all chopping and changing positions. Late parts of qualifying. Brendan Lee is going to be the next one to cross the line. Thomas Runner has gone fourth position. Brendan Lee to the line. I don't think he improves on ninth position, but that brings us to an end of what is an amazing qualifying session. And how about that for Barry Boroman? What a time he has set. Alvaro Clark, Carol, oh, Shinaka Clay was close, but it was not enough. Boroman on pole. Boroman on pole. It looked pretty likely. He was very, very strong in Q2. Nailed that first lap in Q3. And when you nail that first lap, it gives you a delta to aim for on your second lap. It gives you a reference. And it worked out for Barry Boroman. That improvement was enough. It was closer than it might have looked initially. Shanaka Clay, very, very close in second. Alvara Caraton is third. Thomas Ronhar with a great effort in fourth. Jake Benham fifth. De Capua is sixth. Simon Vigang seventh. Beresney eighth. Brendan Lee ninth. And Liam Parnell rounds out the top ten. A bit of a disappointment into, in, into the session for Ferrari there with Danny Beresney eighth and Brendan Lee in ninth. Not ideal at all, was it? <laughs> drivers not putting on not setting the world alight really with their qualifying sessions and it was uh, the mclaren man the iranian driver of barry Borman, to take advantage of that we are getting a uh, quick lobby restart for um for the penalties that uh, sustained by de capua and jake benham uh, but we will have similar conditions in the race. Uh, we'll get onto that later on but that does give us a little bit of time just to go over what we actually need to know here yeah, it sure does. What a, what a qualifying session, Dan. Really, really exciting. Impressive again from Barry Burnerman. Strong in Q2, into Q3, delivered the lap. And he needed that final lap. You know, it didn't look like he was going to need it at first, but he needed it because Shinaka Clay was chopping at his heels just a fraction behind at the end. And if he didn't get that lap in, he would have beaten him to that uh, lap. Just shows you how close, how competitive, how tight this field is. But ha hats off to Barry Burnerman. Pole in the Invitational, victory in the Invitational, and now pole again here. Is this an early pattern that we're going to maybe see quite a lot throughout 2022, whether it's in league racing or in the world of esports? Very impressive. Yeah, maybe 2022 could be the year of Barry Boroman. We just never know at this point, but it is a brilliant start for the Iranian driver to win last week in an epic bout with the likes of Yoni Tormala and uh, Wilson Hughes. And now he's coming into this one. White hot action in PSGL F1. We are getting the new lobby set up now. I've just received an invite. Hopefully you've got yours as well, Andy. But coming into this race, I'm really damn excited and... Uh, 
God, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm just, I'm just feeling it in my veins. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because don't forget, we almost forgot, we've got drivers outside the top 10 that are very quick as well. Jarno Otmir, medium tyre perhaps. Is he going to come charging through? We've seen him try to charge through last week, didn't we? On a set of medium tyres. Uh, sorry, it was Hardy actually went for first stint. It was hard in China he went for first stint. And it got him up to fifth place and it wasn't quite enough. Left his charge a little bit too late. He's going to have to try and dispatch a few cars early on here. He's a little bit higher up in the grid. So he could be one to watch. So we need to consider the strategy too. You know, we talk about the guys up at the top in the top 10, but there's guys outside the top 10 with the fresh choice of tyre that could really mix things up. So we'll need to keep an eye on the likes of Otmir, the likes of Josh Hideaway as well, who's also out of position uh, in the, you know, in 11, between 11th and 15th as well. So yeah, it's going to be very, very enjoyable, very exciting. And Jarno Otmir was 12th, so he's not that far back. So, you know, I've always got to consider what he can do as well. So yeah, really exciting uh, race ahead for, for, for all us viewers. And again, folks, let us know in the chat, who are you going for for victory? Can Jarno Otmir make it work on the different strategy? Or is Barry Buramand going to continue his fine start to 2022? It's all going to get pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, but while we wait, let's have a look at the tier one grid. Obviously, there's a few changes tonight, uh, as I mentioned. Donoso, Hughes, Evans and Moreno out for Warren, Yamulo, Ron Hart and Welsh. But there is our full grid for the season ahead. You've got Otmir and Moreno at the Mercedes team. You've got Liam Parnell and Marcel Kiefer sharing duties at Red Bull with Nicholas Longley in there as well. You've got Danny Beresney and Brendan Lee, Barry and Josh Idawu, Haddad and Clay, Feigang and Donoso, Hughes and Tomala, Benham, Schutter, Romanidis and Caraton and Van Erven and John Evans. What a grid we've got uh, coming up this season. And uh, who's your pick out of those? I know you've said uh, that you think the champion will be Barry Burma, the Iranian driver. Who else in that field tickles your fancy, folks? So for those watching, and Dan as well, is there anyone? Who do you think could be the challenger? Obviously, Jarno Otmir, the champion of F1 Esports and PSGL. Who else in there do you think can mount a challenge this year? Who's, who's going to have a really strong 2022 in the world of league racing? Well, of course, you've got the likes of uh, Jarno Otmir, Danny Moreno and, uh, and Jake Benham, who you know are going to perform any time that they uh, step in in PSGL is almost inevitable. But uh, I don't think there's enough talk about Wilson Hughes uh, for the Alpha Towery team this season. Competing in Challengers, PC Challengers, which of course will be uh, on tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening. I believe PlayStation Challengers are going on at the moment. Uh, but it is really exciting stuff to see Wilson Hughes. Maybe it's the PlayStation bias for me, but uh, I really do love seeing this guy drive. And he is a top fellow as well. And uh, maybe Andy, maybe he's my favourite Scotsman. I do apologise. Oh, come on. You can't say that on this stream. Oh, shocking behaviour. Shocking <laughs> behaviour, Dan. Oh, well. Uh, you're not my favourite Englishman. You're not my favourite Englishman. So there you go. John Evans, of course. Yeah, well, is it? <laughs> 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 well, John, if you're watching, you're not here tonight. Just to let you know, you're not my favourite Englishman either. I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, get back to the, uh, the commentator chat and uh, discuss it a little bit more. Big race ahead uh, for the drivers. And uh, yeah, you know, we've got 33 laps ahead of us around this port of mouth circuit. A new one for, well, in, in tw uh, last season and this season. A new track for us all to, to enjoy. But you know, I want to speak about the track for a wee bit, Dan, because... I really enjoy this one. I really do. A lot of the new tracks in recent years in Formula 1, I've not really been a fan of. Kind of thought, ugh, a bit mundane. I remember when Vietnam came on, I was like, oh, I'm not a fan of that one. But certainly Portugal, really enjoyable. It's a shame it's not on the actual Formula 1 calendar this year because I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I think there's so much scope for overtaking and battling on this circuit. Turn 1, you can make a move in the DRS. If not, you can battle all the way through 2, 3, 4, down the hill into Turn 5 at Tory Vip. And even then, Dan, you can battle through the next sequence of corners. It's so wide and so inviting to send one up the inside into some of these turns. And I actually think it's one of my favourite tracks to commentate over, which came as a surprise to me. I never thought I'd say that, but I really enjoy it. There's so much variation in where you can try and pull a pass, and I hope we'll see that in the race today. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, the Portimao is one of the better, uh, better, more like more accurate circuits that Codemasters yeah. have done, and maybe that's uh, what makes it so enjoyable to commentate over. Of course, very new circuit on the F1 calendar, only hosted its first race uh, in 2020, and of course, it's the uh, 
second time that we're seeing it in PSGL. We saw it at the final race last season that ended in a brilliant photo finish between uh, Johanan and Jano Otmir. But coming in to this one today, we're going to see a whole host of drivers taking it on. I really cannot wait. Of course, also being a newer circuit, it's sort of uh, a bit more difficult for these drivers to really have a firm grip, you know. Circuits like a Spa, Britain, they've been on the F1 games for as, as long as they've been around. So uh, they've been able to get accustomed to them quite a, for quite some time. But Portimao, a bit more of a uh, bit more of an unknown for them. And I'm really excited to see how they challenge it. Yeah, it, it really is an unknown because even for someone like myself, I don't play the game very often. Like, see if I tried to drive Portimao now, I'd have no idea. I'd be all over the place about, where am I going? Uh, but, you know... You know, when I pick up Spa or Mons or anything like that, I can drive it no bother. And I'm sure uh, the esports drivers feel that as well initially in the first few weeks of playing the circuit, driving the circuit. But I think they're pretty tuned in now, aren't they? But 33 laps there, Dan, ahead of the drivers here. What kind of strategy can we expect? Uh, are we going to see the likes of Otmir starting on mediums? Will we maybe see hard tyres again, like we saw in China? I know China historically can be quite bad on tyres and the soft medium can be quite marginal at times. So, do you think we'll see mediums or hards from the guys outside the top 10, or do you think they'll start in the softs? It's going to be interesting to see what they pick, because we saw a real mixture in China last week, all three compounds in use off the grid. I don't believe we'll see any uh, softs outside the top 10. Of course, the top yeah. 10 drivers uh, have to all start on the tyre that they qualified on in in Q2, which I think all of them are on the, media, on the soft tyre, sorry. But I think we're going to see a mix of uh, the mediums and the hard. I think either of them can work and uh, it is really just about driving the car as best that you can i know that sounds easy on paper but you do have to have the consistency and the tire management of course so uh, i'd say we're going to see more of a split between the mediums and the hards and that's going to really spice things up coming into this race and now you've seen the the grid dan you've seen how it all lines up you've got barry Burman on pole and shinaka clay alongside and plenty in behind in the fight who, who are you going for then? Who, now you've seen the grid, who's, who's going to get the victory today? Come on, stick your neck on the line, tell us. Oh, that's a tough one. Oh. But I think, you know what? I've, I've, gone him for the, I've gone him to win the championship. I've got to have confidence in him. I'm going to go with Barry Burmand to win this race. I tipped Thomas Ronhart for pole. Didn't quite work out. I do think he is going to get a podium though. But uh, I do believe that Barry Burmand is going to be the one to win this race. Okay, well, you go, you're going for Barry Burriman. I was going to go for Barry Burriman, but I'm not going to be boring. I'm not going to be boring. I am going to go and stick my neck right on the line. Jan Watmia from 12th on the grid. I think, I think maybe there's something in the strategy. I don't think he's deliberately... I don't think he was slow in qualifying. I think he had something in his mind. So I think maybe outside the top 10, Jan Watmia charging through, making it work, and getting the job done with a few laps to go. That's going to be my prediction for the race. I would normally go Barry in this instance, but... We've got to have some balance in the commentary box, don't we, Dan? We've got to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to go for the Altmere victory. I'm sure everyone in the chat has got plenty of opinions on who they think will be the victor today. But uh, I just want to have a quick word again on Thomas Ronhar. Well, I think he was fourth there in qualifying. What a showing that is, Dan, to pick the game up and, you know, uh, move con move from console to PC, you know, rig the whole lot and, and, and perform at this level so well, so quickly. That... That is a sign of a, a real start of the future, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It really is impressive uh, to be at that level already coming onto the PC because realist, like really, I got people who haven't transitioned. You know, I played on the PlayStation before. It did feel like a different game, and I'm not a I'm not a good level driver at all. I think I was season 26 PSGL PSF10 or something. So uh, I think the difference is more is it's more monumental for uh, for the for the drivers coming from the console to the PC you know it's a big jump as well going from I think 60 FPS to uh, some of these guys are PCs they're absolutely mental you can go upwards of 240 FPS you know on a 240 monitor hurt screen so really it is a huge step up and uh, it is a difficult transition so I do think that uh, I do think that Thomas Ronha really has impressed for uh, about two weeks on this platform uh, he's al he's already been uh, at the top of his game, and that is evidence in this grid today. Yeah, and so so you think podium potentially? Is that is that what you think? You think he can get onto the podium today? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking a P2 or P3. Uh, I'm not set, I'm not tipping him for the win, but I I, I think uh, in F2, which I do believe he is racing in, uh, that will be tomorrow. 
I do think he is going to be a championship contender. So there you go. It's the perfect way to warm up for the championship you're competing in. F2, isn't it? Racing tonight in F1. By the way, folks, we are moments away from getting underway. We're just resetting the lobby up. The timer has now started on the lobby. So don't worry, folks. We'll be in that lobby and on that formation lap in a few moments' time. Uh, just resetting. If you've just joined us, we're just resetting the lobby. Alessio De Capua and Jake Benham received five place grid penalties from the game, which were unfair. So we've done the right thing here at PSGL. We're all for sporting fairness. And of course, we've restarted the lobby, set the grid up as it should be. And we're now all set to go racing. So we're just jumping into the lobby now and we will get underway with that formation lap. And then we can see what kind of strategy those drivers outside the top 10 are going for. Will it be mediums? Will it be hards? How much, how long into this race are they planning to go? Because, you know, so often, Dan, we see that medium strategy being a little bit more overpowered, starting on that works better than starting on the softs. We are now jumping into that lobby. The cars are on the grid now, so let's get set up in a few moments' time as we just wait for it to load, and we will have the formation lap for the opening race of the season here in Portimao. The Portuguese Grand Prix, an absolute cracker awaits us. Be sure to get buckled up into your seatbelts, get the popcorn ready, grab yourself a drink, because this is going to be a cracker. 33 laps around this 15-turn, tight, twisty, up and down, undulating circuit here at Portimao. It's bound to be a cracker. And Dan is going for Barry Burnham to get the victory. I'm going to go over Jarno Watmere with a big result. And we've got migrating horse. If we get more issues here, I'm hoping we don't. Um, Jarno Watmere left the session, so I think we might have a further pause, folks. You see, this is what happens when you're desperate for something to happen. You have to wait that little bit longer, Dan. The tension continues to rise. I feel like a child on Christmas morning, honestly. <laughs> you know, I'm just just waiting for, for my presents in the morning. And your know, mum's like, I don't know, we make a cup of tea. All of that. I'm feeling that right now. I'm getting uh, flashbacks of when, uh, when I was a lot younger. But uh, we are having to wait once more, I do believe. Or, unless Yano can get back into the lobby. And no, I've just received an invite for another uh, lobby, oh. so I think once again, I think we are uh, we are migrating. We <laughs> these issues are out of our control, and uh, they do happen once in a blue moon. So we really do apologise, but we will get into the race very soon here. Yeah, for once they're out of our control, unlike earlier on. But uh, hey, we can laugh about that now. It's it's out of the way. We've got the stream working as we like. But uh, okay, further time to to talk about the season ahead then, Dan. So. Let's have a look at the calendar once again. We've looked at it at the start of the show. Here it is again. We've obviously had the placements, but of course we've formed the grid. And uh, yes, 15 races ahead. We're starting here tonight uh, in Portimao for the Portuguese Grand Prix. And be sure to join us, folks, throughout the season. If you're if you're new to the channel, you're new to league racing, you're new to PSGL action with this star-studded grid, be sure to like and subscribe because these races will be coming to you every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on the dates shown. So we're going to Silverstone uh, next week for the British Grand Prix. I think all these races tie in with the challengers, you know, just to help with those drivers as well so they're not practicing on two circuits. We've got Monaco on the 2nd of February. And uh, Dan, Monaco Grand Prix coming up. Uh, you know, it's great to see that PSGL having a real variation of racetracks. We spoke about this last week, didn't we, during the uh, Invitational. You've got tracks like Portugal, where you can have plenty of racing on in Silverstone, but also the Jewel in the Crown, the Monaco Grand Prix, which really does punish mistakes. And it's uh, good to have that in there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, I do believe that uh, Monaco, is, it's making its debut on the PSGL PC calendar. Of course, it's been uh, in the past 30 seasons of uh of psgl you know you're gonna have at least one monaco grand prix but uh it, it, it's making its debut on the pc platform uh, we didn't have it in season 28 and uh, it was a short season in season 29 i don't even believe it was planned for there but it is finally uh on the psgl calendar and make sure you vote in the uh live chat as well who will win portimao your four options are barry burman shanaka clay alvaro Caraton, or yano otme make sure you get voting on that poll yeah, be sure to get your votes in, folks. We're interested to hear who you think can get the victory. But, uh, you know, that just shows the class of Jarno Watmere. He might be outside the top 10, but he still gets a place on that poll. You can never write him off. But, yeah, yeah, as you say, great to see Monaco getting a shout in the calendar as well. We go to France, Le Castellet. And, Dan, you spoke to me last week. A track you really enjoy. And real life Formula 1 when we go there, quite often we kind of go, oh, not France. But on this game, it can be quite... Enjoyable. It could be quite cat and mouse down that back straight. So I'm looking forward to going there as well. 
I really like Le Castellet. I think it is one of my top five uh, tracks to drive on. Maybe that's why I'm a little bit biased towards it. But I also like commentating on it. And uh, not to mention, we had a really good uh, real-life Grand Prix, depending on, I guess, depending on uh, who you actually support. You know, if you're a Max Verstappen <laughs> fan, of course, you're going to love it. Lewis Hamilton fans, not so much. But uh, it really is a brilliant circuit. It's got a lot of history as well at Paul Ricard. So uh, I, think it, I think we need to give France a little bit of love here. Yeah, okay. Fine, fine. Just for you, Dan. I'll give it a little bit of love. I'm not going to get into who I support. That would open a big can of worms uh, in the chat. I'm sure it would. Uh, given how ferocious that championship battle was that last season in uh, real life Formula 1, hopefully we can have something very, very similar here as well. We go to the Hungara ring after that. A classic track. A uh, the home circuit of Danny Beresny, of course. Then we head to Austria, Saudi Arabia as well. And Dan, Saudi Arabia, thoughts on that one. Brand new track on the calendar, the fastest street circuit in the world. And, uh, you know, it's a real, real challenge for the drivers as well, isn't it? God, Saudi Arabia is a scary circuit to break. <laughs> yeah. there. My, my God, I, I hard, I've hardly driven on it, but I've... Uh, Co-brow moments at every moment, and uh, I'd, I'd imagine that uh, a lot of the esports drivers, you know, they're going to be a hell of a lot better than uh, you and I, or the or the average player. Uh, it, but it really does throw some twists and turn. I believe it is got it's got the most corners out of any circuit. I think mm -hmm. it's up to 27, and it's got that uh, that long back straight, of course, leading into that final corner, which then opens up onto the main start finish straight. So it is a uh, a brilliant, it's a brilliant scene, really. Yeah, fantastic circuit, Saudi Arabia, and there's a few doubts when it was first designed, and, you know, as usual, everyone takes has that hot take when they see the layout, and they think, ugh, doesn't look great, but really, really enjoyable circuit, and uh, watching Max Verstappen's attempt at pole position there was something special. I don't often get off my seat and nearly fall off the couch in qualifying, but it really was impressive last year watching that, and of course, they pushed too hard in the end, didn't they? So, second half of the calendar, Belgium, round number eight. Uh, a classic circuit, uh, the Dutch Grand Prix as well in there, Brazilian Grand Prix at Sao Paulo, another undulating racetrack, very similar to Portugal in that sense with the elevation change, then we go really high up to Mexico City for round 11, the highest Grand Prix circuit on the Formula 1 calendar, then we head to Marina Bay, Singapore, not a circuit you would expect to see uh, in a league racing calendar uh, when you shorten it down, but it really will be a challenge because it is will be the longest race in terms of distance, won't it? They will need to be concentrated for the course of the sea, for the course of that race because in terms of time, it is a long race, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's the longest track on the calendar, but uh, also, I am I'm just noticing. I think the countdown is rolling, and Whoa. finally. I think finally, after a long wait, I know everyone has been very, very patient and uh, I'm seeing the discontent in the live chat too, but I finally do think we are about to get ready for this race after a long, long time and lots of things going on, but we won't acknowledge them anymore because we have finally, finally got the race going on. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get going in a few moments time, folks. And uh, as Dan said, it's like a kid waiting for to open his Christmas presents on Christmas Day. But you can open them in a minute because the present is about to arrive. The uh, opening race of the PSGL PC F1 season is moments away. They were into the lobby now and in a few moments time, we'll have the cars out there uh, on the formation lap and we'll get an idea of which tyres they're on. What about Brendan Lee then? Let's talk about him briefly while we wait on getting things underway, Dan. Brendan, in there, very, very strong driver. As I mentioned at the top of the show, like Jarno Watmir, uh, the only two-time back-to-back F1 esports champion other than Jarno. What can he do today? He'll be looking for a strong showing in his return to league racing. Yeah, of course. It's been a long absence from league racing from Brendan Lee, the two-time F1 esports champion, the inaugural winner in 2017, getting the back-to-back -back in 20... Oh, it appears we've lost Dan. Well, hopefully we can get him back shortly. But it appears we've lost Dan from the commentary box, folks. But uh, hopefully we'll get him back in a few moments' time. But uh, there is the scene at the moment. We are in the lobby. We're just waiting for things to load up. Uh, we will hopefully have the cars out on the track in a few moments' time. But hopefully we can get Dan back in here in a minute. But he has departed the scene. So hopefully Dan can rejoin us in a few moments' time. And we will be ready for this qualifying session to get underway. Uh, sorry, the race to get underway, not qualifying session. What am I talking about? But just to recap, folks, pole position, it is Barry Buriman. He's got Shanaka Clay alongside him and Alvaro Caraton in third with Thomas Ronhart with a very impressive performance in fourth. Hopefully we can get our good friend Dan back in a minute. 
and we I'm can. Here. Hey, he's back. Hey, good to have you back, Dan. I thought you decided ah, you'd waited long enough and you'd, you'd had enough of the race. You didn't want to watch it, but thankfully, I can say that Dan is back. Have you got your camera on, Dan, and we can show your face again? Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Come on, give us a wave. It, get the it, camera it, on. It, it, <laughs> it, uh, well, good to have you back, Dan. It, it, Takes a few moments to get started. My Discord just decided, you know what? Let, let's not work. Let's uh, let's go out the window. But <laughs> I'm back. Uh, a whole flurry of issues coming on today. But finally, uh, the race is about to start. It, it, it's been a long, long wait. Or, or, but, uh, there's not much more we can cover, really. <laughs> or, or, or is it? Because <laughs> we're still waiting for players here. Oh, God. And we might not be getting into the race just yet. But we'll have to wait and see. But this is the scene because, I know... All of yours, they want to know what the issues are, why there's troubles, but there you go. That's the scene, waiting for players. A circle in the top left-hand corner, and we're just waiting like everyone else. So, you know, uh, that's the scene at the minute. So we'll go back into, uh, you know, the camera mode. Well, maybe not yet, because Dan's not got it on yet. But, you know, let's take another look at the grid then. For tier one, and there it is once again. A few changes, obviously, tonight, as I mentioned, um, for this grid. But, oh, it does now look like we're going to get going. We do have a countdown. So, finally, folks, we can show you the race broadcast. We do have, there you go, the countdown. Ten seconds to go, and the opening race of the PSGL PC F1 season will be underway. Let's get a look at the tyre compounds for those outside the top ten. Let's get another refresh, re rather look at that grid, because I've not seen it for quite some time. But it looks like we're going to head on to the grid in a few moments' time. And there we go, <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for, the start of the formation lap. So the cars then making their way off the grid, Barry Buramand on pole position, and he is joined on the front row by Shanaka Clay for this one. And there you go, look at that, P12 on the grid, I said he might do it, he has done it. The only man in the field, and he's on a set of the hard compound tyres. Does he know something the others don't, Dan? Interesting. Very interesting indeed from Jan Ortme. He's going to be the only driver on this strategy. So uh, it is about maintaining that gap to the leaders in front of him, especially those on the sauce. They're going to be his prey later on in the Grand Prix. It's also imperative that he ch he gets these tyres uh, as much heat on this formation lap as possible. You might see him weave it a bit more than some other drivers because those hards, they are slow to get going. And uh, once they're in the race, they do tend to settle down. They get a little bit better, but uh, they really do feel awful compared to the other tyres at the very beginning of the race. Yeah, well, let's see how it gets on on those tyres. We'll be interesting to see if it can make it work. But uh, there you go then, Barry Burnerman starting from pole position. The top ten, as we, as we obviously expected, have to start on the tyres they qualified on. And that is what they're on. So they're all on soft tyres. Then we've got Louis Welsh on mediums. Diana Watmere on hards. Interestingly, everyone else, apart from Matthias van Erven, who is on softs down in 18th place. So if that's a mistake, I'm not sure. Or he thinks that that might be the choice to go for. Remains to be seen. But everyone else, apart from Jarno and van Erven, the two Dutch drivers, opting for the medium tyre. Everyone in the top 10 on the softs. Here they go then, lining up on the grid for the opening race of the PC season here in PSGL, 2022 is about to get going. We've had to wait, perhaps a little bit longer than we would have liked, but the cars are now beginning to line up on the grid. It's Barry Brunemad on the front row, and here is Shinaka Clay then, moving himself into position alongside. And will he point that car towards Barry Brunemad on the run to turn one? Will he go for that pinch point, the inside line into turn one? It remains to be seen. Alvaro Caraton lines up in fourth. Thomas Ronhart, what a story it would be if he could get a strong result from fourth. Jake Benham behind him in the grid in fifth. As they all make their way onto the grid, they're all in position now as we get set for those five red lights and when they come on we will be getting ready for the race one light two lights three lights four lights five and when they go out 2022 in psgl will be go it's barry Burnamad leading from pole position shanaka clay gets a good start but not good enough to pull alongside barry leads them into turn one shanaka second avaro Caraton in third with thomas ronar in p4 as they sweep into turn two and up the hill through turn three still barry leads the way shanaka clay is there as is Caraton. he's going side by side with thomas ronar who's forced 
a little bit wide. Ronha mixing it with the eSports drivers. Going to try and go round the outside into turn five. It would be a good move, but he can't get it done. Or can he? He can! Epic stuff from Ronha alongside Caraton, and he moves through into third place. Great move there, Dan. Unbelievable from Thomas Ronha around the outside at Toro Vit early on lap number one. We have had some drama further back behind. Simon Vigang has got some damage in the two Ferrari cars as well. Oh. Looking to go toe to toe at the moment as now around the outside of his teammate. Brendan Lee trying to find an avenue on Danny Beresne through turn number 12. He could possibly got the inside at turn 13. No, he backs out at the very last moment there, but he was oh so close to getting by on his teammate. And you can see further back down the order, they're all shut and changing positions. Simon by getting the one losing out. He's lost his front left end plate. He's got a box at the end of this lap, Andy. So it's Astor then on, uh, to start 2022 for Simon Vigang. He has lost his front wing as they all make their way across the start finish line at the end of this first lap. And we might have a move in the battle for P10. Let's have a look if we can pick it up. Come on, pick it up. There we go. Alessio De Capua battling with Jan Watmir, who's gained one place on those hard tyres. And you've got to say, it might only, only be one place, but that is good stuff from Jarno Otmia to gain a place despite being on a set of hard tyres. Some of us would have expected him to go backwards, not forwards, and that's a good start for him. Yeah, absolutely, and he's going to try and maintain this gap to all of the hard, uh, all the soft runners in front of us. Matthijs van Erven has different plans. He goes up the inside of Jarno Otmia, and he's made that move stick brilliantly. I don't think Jarno Otmia wants to wear out his hearts all too early, so he's not going to bite that one with uh, with the fellow Dutchman. He's going to hang back, stay in 11th. All he needs to do in this race is to keep up with these soft runners. Then he they will be at his mercy later on in this Grand Prix. It is settling out to be a brilliant race at the moment. Barry Broman leads from Chen Naka Clay, Thomas Ronha in third and Alvaro Caraton in fourth. But how will this all change once DRS gets enabled? Well, we're going to find out very soon because lap number three is about to roll along. Yeah, and this is why I love Portugal. We're already seeing moves in areas of the racetrack where you maybe wouldn't expect it. But here is one potentially where we would expect it. Danny Beresny tucked right up behind Jake Benham as they go across the start finish line. Is he going to be close enough to try and make a move into that turn one? He's tucked right up behind him in the slipstream. Won't be close enough, but surely with DRS, you'd think that would be a much easier attempt to remove. Not quite close enough this time round, and he stays in fifth position. But his problem, of course, everyone in it in front of him will also have DRS, and that's what we call a DRS train. But now Beresney going to try something a little bit different. DRS opening up now for Benham as uh, Benham defends the inside. Beresney going to try and go right round the outside. The Hungarian driver can he do it? Ron hard there on the opening lap. It looks like he might be able to through turn six to go. He'll have the inside now for turn number seven. Beresney and Benham, the two B's battling, and it's Beresney who comes out on top. Lovely stuff through turn seven and eight, and he gets it done. Benham ain't giving it up though. Still battling away with Danny Beresney on the outside now. Will he try and switch back on the exit of turn 11? He can't do that. Beresney gets it done. Epic racing between the pair, and the Hungarian climbs up into fifth. Brilliant stuff from Danny Beresney there to get past. Jake Benham and now the Hungarian is in fifth position going to be tracking down the Williams of Alvaro Caraton but Jake Benham not going to be giving up too easy here he might have another opportunity down into the first corner at turn number one where of course he will have the DRS advantage on Danny Beresney he'll be following in the wheel tracks of the Ferrari or potentially his teammate over Brendan Lee Danny's teammate Brendan Lee in the other Ferrari could try and challenge at some point but uh, they all maintain position through turn number one. I believe the only driver without DRS on this grid at the moment, uh, well, at least in the lead train, is Barry Broman, and he's leading this race, and that's going to leave him vulnerable to the Aston Martin of Shanaka Clay. Yeah, he's tucked right up behind him at the minute of Shanaka Clay, but let's go back to Brendan Lee. Oh, I thought he was maybe going to go for a move there. Let's not, and let's go back to Shanaka Clay then. Second in the field at the minute behind Barry Broman, just, you know, taking his time at the minute, just uh, bedding himself into this Grand Prix. And at the minute, it's just about holding station unless he thinks he can go that much quicker. And, you know, you just feel at this stage of the Grand Prix, they're just saving their ERS, not wanting to get into too much of a battle because it would leave them prey to drivers behind. But Thomas Ronhar, you spoke about him getting a podium. What a start. What a move he made on Caraton in the opening lap. Got it done. And now he finds himself in a fantastic position in P3. What more can he do? You said you didn't want to go as far as tip him for a win. 
but the sky's the limit for this guy. He is, is, he's just absolutely flying. And in third position at the minute, doing well to cling on to this pair. Let's see what he can do this afternoon as we watch Shinaka Clay come around that final corner. Won't be close enough for a move, you wouldn't think, on Barry Burman as we watch them all funnel out across the start line. We've got the McLaren, the Aston Martin, the Haas. Look how close Shinaka's getting, but not quite close enough for a move. Let's see if he can get a good run coming out of turn number three and four to maybe set one up. He's tighter than Buramad into that corner. Well, this might be an opportunity then as they sweep up through four, but no, not quite close enough. He'll be staying where he is, second at the minute. And uh, let's go back to Brendan Lee. Ball from Brendan Lee and he makes it work on Benham. Ricardo West from Brendan Lee. Through he goes. Both Ferraris now moving ahead of that Alfa Romeo. Great stuff from Brendan. Yeah, absolutely. This race is filled with action from both of the Ferrari cars at this point in time. Now, if it was first Danny Beresney, then it was Brendan Lee scything his way up the inside at Torre Vips as uh, Brendan Lee. Oh. Sorry, Jake Benham. Not looking too great at the moment as uh, Josh Idawu. He's out in the pit lane. Yeah, he's retired from the Grand Prix, so one McLaren leading the field at the minute, the other retiring, the first retiree of this season in 2022. Uh, Josh, anyway, not a title he's looking for, and he leaves the session uh, not too happy with how things have started for them. As things begin to settle down now uh, at the front, everyone around four and a half, five tenths. Let's keep a look at Shinaka Clay. Is he going to be close enough this time? Not quite. Stays put in second place, and the gap stays around two or three tenths, which is enough for Barry Burman. A minute to just hold his own but keep an eye then Jan Watt you're still clinging on half a second off the back of Van Erwin this is a really good start to the Grand Prix for Oppenheimer solid stuff isn't it uh, yeah Andy I think you're, you're having some audio issues here okay. at this point uh, there's, a, there's a lot of complaints and uh, that, that might need to get sorted at this point but uh, we are we are working on it teething issues uh, in the first race of the season we do apologise once again but uh we continue on in this race. Shanika Clay is closing up to uh, he's closing up to the back of Barry Boroman as is Thomas Ronhar on lap number six. Shanika Clay having a half look up the inside in towards turn number ten. Yeah, but no, he's not going to go for the move at that point there. Yeah, hopefully things are okay now. But, uh, let us know, folks, if the if the audio is still a bit uh, dodgy. But Boroman did he looked a little bit wide at the top of turn eleven and. Uh, turn 10 and 11, and Clay almost had the opportunity to go for the move, but look at Ronhar, look at this! Two tenths off the back of Shinaka Clay, and if there's any move coming here, it looks like it's going to be coming from Thomas Ronhar. Wasn't quite happy with picking off one esports driver, he wants to try and pick off two. Barry Buriman's in trouble uh, as they get even closer into turn one. Look at the three of them, all in a line through that first corner. Shinaka Clay right in the middle of a sandwich here and Bruderman still holds on but it's also close between those three as they now sweep through turn three up the hill now into turn number four still Barry Bruderman in front it's Ron Harm maybe going to think about a dive bond just like Brendan Lee did a few corners ago a few laps ago not quite he stays in P3 Yep, all this battling brings in the likes of Alvaro Caraton, Danny Beresnay and Brendan Lee into this train. The fastest lap went the way of Thomas Ronhart last time by. He is the quickest man out on circuit at the moment, mixing it in with all the esports drivers and possibly in towards the first corner. We could see uh, a few more, or just a move being made as Barry Burman once again likes to take it wide through turn number 10, gets him a good exit off the exit into turn 11 and 12 up towards 13 though. It's looking like Thomas Ronhart is very close to the rear of Shanika Clay and possibly as Dylan Warren gets a three second time penalty, we could see some moves into the first corner as out the exit of the last braking zone and down towards a gallop corner. Here we go. Can we see a move potentially into the first corner? I'm watching Shanika Clay's four tenths back from Barry Boroman at this point. Here he goes down in towards turn number one. He's closing to the rear of the McLaren driver. Can he go for an overtake up the inside? No. Hanging back. I think he wants to keep this DRS. Just keep Barry Boroman on his toes as well and he for this time being. Yeah, he is and they're just going to bide their time at the minute by the looks of it. No sign of a move at the minute. Uh, Thomas Ronhar now stays in there but in behind in third position. Caraton and Beresnay, they're all in a line and they're just biding their time waiting for the moment to pounce. Let's see how far away we will be from pit stops. Jan Wapnir still in 11th place at the minute. Just about clinging on 
to the DRS off the back of Matthias van Erven. So he's doing what he needs to do. Being ahead of as many medium runners as that at this stage is good going for him. So he will be one to watch later on in this Grand Prix. But at the minute, at the minute Dan, it looks like Thomas Ronha is the man that really is looking the quickest of this trio. He's the one that's pushing along the most, trying to get on with it, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. As uh, He's just trying to keep up with these two leads. He's doing a pretty damn good job of it at the moment on the rear of the Aston Martin. We saw Dylan Warren, unfortunately, retire in the pit lane. And uh, he is out second DNF of the day. But can we see Shanaka Clay possibly go for a move? He is closer this time by, but only marginally. He's not using any ERS. That hints to me he doesn't want to go for a move. You see, he doesn't want to pull out to the right-hand side. He's hanging back on Boroman as I'm having a bit of lag issues. Uh, hopefully that could be fixed in time being. I think that's just for me personally. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been a very interesting race so far as we've seen Matthijs van oh. Erwin going way off at uh, turn number one. He's out of this race, he's retired on circuit. Okay, well, he's gone, and that's a shame for Matthias van Erven. Dylan Warren is also out of the Grand Prix, so we've lost three now. Van Erven, Warren, Idaho, all out of the Grand Prix, so not ideal for them at all. So things going to bad, from bad to worse then for van Erven, out of the Grand Prix now, and that's a shame for him. Liam Parnell, Simon Vagang, well out of contention too. They are on the hard tyres, 39 seconds off the back of Pedreño. They're only just getting up to the retired Van Erven car now, so not ideal from them. Let's move back a little bit to Brendan Lee, who's behind Danny Beresney at the minute, three or four tenths behind him. And uh, the Ferraris, they've been almost uh, tied together at the hip, haven't they, so far in this Grand Prix? Very, very closely matched. Yeah, absolutely. Those, uh, those two probably the closest on pace we have seen today. Of course, we've seen consistency from the likes of uh, Barry Burrowman and Josh Idlewood at McLaren. You know, those guys have uh, also been very tight together. But these two, uh, they're like the other, they're like uh, both sides of a, of a pound coin. Uh, you know, they don't want to separate from each other. And uh, it's going to be either one of them. You know, it's 50-50 as to who is going to be the quickest. It looks like Dan Danny Beresney is that man at the moment. They're following in the train at the moment. Led by Barry Burman, he has been leading since the beginning of this Grand Prix. He's still got Shanaka Clay on his tail and Thomas Ronha, Alvaro Caraton as well here. So it's all heating up at this point in the race. Yep, still heating up. Sorry, folks, just having a little look at the mic issues there, trying to adjust the, the issues we had. Hopefully that has sorted it for you guys. I know it's been a bit loud, and, uh, especially for those with earphones, so apologies for that. Hopefully that has sorted itself out, though. Uh, but at the minute, lap 10 out of 33, we're coming up to one-third race distance, and it's still Barry Burman in the lead from Chinaka Clay, and Thomas Ronhart are just keen to push them on a little bit. He's just right in there, Brendan Lee right up behind Danny Beresney too, as we watch them sweep through turn number 14 once again, and down towards the start-finish line. Are we going to see any moves on this lap? Barry Burman maybe putting his foot down, maybe trying to break away, and does that mean that Chinaka Clay's at prey to Thomas Ronhart? Maybe not yet, as they make their way over the start-finish line, and it looks like the DRS is just going to even itself out once again. No sign of a move. Perhaps Brendan Lee's close enough. He is close enough. He's pulling alongside his Ferrari teammate. Down the inside goes Brendan Lee. Gets it done on Beresney and moves up into fifth position. Excellent stuff from Brendan Lee. Absolutely. Finding the way on his teammate in the first corner. Not an easy thing to do, but he's made that work very nice indeed. That fighting has lost them a little bit more, uh, a little bit of time to the likes of Caraton, Ron Harsh and Akakale, all those drivers up front, but they will swiftly be able to retake that gap with the uh, love, with the use of DRS. As I'm looking at uh, Alvaro Caraton, he's looking very close on the rear of Thomas Ronhar at this point. The fight for third, and it could continue on throughout this Grand Prix. We're on lap 11 of 33, we're at the heart, we're at the one third point of this race. I've still a long way to go. None of the soft drivers have come into the pit lane yet but I'd imagine in the coming few laps we are going to start to see some of these soft runners come into the box it is key to note that uh, when you start to see drivers use up a bit more of their ERS that's uh, that's when they uh, they begin to shine yeah that looks like we're getting closer and closer to that window for the first pit stop, as you see Alvaro Caraton then, is going to die very late then for the pits, he's going to go for the undercut, the Williams driver is in, let's see what he's going to put on that car, will it be a set of hards, will it be a set of mediums, 
Let's see as he makes his way down the pit lane. Shinaka Clay, though, will go back to the on-track action. We'd rather see that than a driver in the pit lane. And uh, we'll see what tyres Caraton puts on as he gets into his box now. Uh, let's see what he puts on. And it's a medium set of tyres for the remaining 22 laps of this Grand Prix. Let's see how he goes as Shinaka Clay tries to reel in Barry Burnerman. But it's still as they were. These guys going a little bit longer. Will they be in at the end of this lap or are they going to go for a few more laps beyond this? It remains to be seen as Barry Burnerman continues to lead this race with Shinaka Clay and Thomas Ronner, Brendan Lee now zooming in to the back of this trio at the front with Caraton dropping out of position and into the pit lane and he's came out of the pits into 12 seconds of clean air so plenty of clean air to work in not being disturbed by any of the drivers that have pitted so far. Yeah, absolutely that's going to be key for Alvaro Caraton that's also going to inspire some uh, more movement down at the pit lane for the other leaders in avoidance of the just to avoid getting undercut by Caraton because that undercut can be so so powerful when you've got all that clear air and you're able to uh, you're able to run your own race on a fresh set of tyres and imagine we are going to see some drivers that come into the pit lane Burband being one of them Shanaka Clay being the other and Thomas Ronha the only one to stay out it seems I think Brendan Lee has come to the pits that's forced Danny Beresday to stay out on circuit to avoid the double stack uh, and Jake Benham as well has stayed out as well as Louis Welch Alvaro uh, Alessio Di Capua so all these drivers staying out on circuit but we do have a lot of drivers coming into the pit lane now and Brendan Lee interestingly enough he's gone onto a set of the hards oh so hard tyres for Brendan Lee that's an interesting choice from him Alvaro Caraton then despite pitting a little bit earlier has he managed to get ahead of these guys let's pick that up he is ahead of Brendan Lee, but he was beforehand, wasn't he? He's ahead of Shinaka Clay as well. So he's got himself in between Barry Burnamand and Shinaka Clay. So that's a net P2 now for Alvaro Caraton. He's not quite close enough to try and make a move on Bur Bur Burnamand down into the breaking zone as we've now lost Dan from the session. Oh, we've had numerous issues tonight. And there's another one, folks, unfortunately. So hopefully we can get Dan back in the lobby pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to have to try and invite him, but I don't have him on my friends list, so how do I do that, is the uh, question. Don't, uh, don't worry about me, I'll, I'll find a way in, uh, I'll be I'll be alright here. Okay, no problem, uh, hopefully we can get Dan back in in a few moments, but this is where we need to be on track at the minute. Barney Burnerman rejoins the track, net leader, we're waiting on the pit stops in front, as Thomas Ronhart uh, up the road and Danny Beresney have now made their pit stops, where will they rejoin? in relation to this group of drivers as several go along. Uh, we're still waiting on a stop from Jake Benham. We're waiting on Louis Welsh, but he's going long on mediums. Lesser de Capua as well. Jan Watmir on hearts. He'll be going very, very long. So across the line they go. Keep an eye on the right-hand side. Maybe best to pick up someone like Brendan Lee for this. Let's see where Thomas Ronhar and Danny Beresney come out on the right. There they are. Where is Brendan Lee going to be? He's going to slot in front of his teammate and Ronhar behind Clay. And Brendan Lee says there's an opportunity. Goes to the outside. Can he get the job done in Ronhar? Ronhar has the high ground of the inside. Brendan Lee looking for the switch back through three. Now up through four. Taking on the Haas driver. Thomas Ronhar who has a little squeeze of the ERS button and survives just about the attack of Brendan Lee and both Ferraris stay behind this group of drivers. Ronha rejoins behind Clay Caraton and Barry Burman. So that's a net P4 for him. Jake Benham though, still out front and still going very, very long into this race. Surely we'll see him into the pit lane at the end of this lap. 13 laps, a long way to go in the softs. Will he be going any further? Let's keep an eye on him now. As he comes around that final corner, he's bailing out. He's going into the pits. So in comes Benham. Let's pick up Barry in P10 at the lead yeah, of nah. this train. Good to have you back, Dan. And it's uh, yeah. looking like a very, very interesting battle in the pits at the minute. Wonder, I wonder how it's going to work out for Brendan Lee on the set of hard tyres. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's an odd decision from Brendan Lee. I do think the mediums can go to the end at this point as Burman sets the quickest lap of the Grand Prix so far. He's going to easily get by on Jake Benham and I think Benham is going to come out all the way behind Danny Beresley. He's going to slot in 15th position at this point in time. That leaves Louis Welch, the leader of this Grand Prix on a set of the medium compound of tyre. And I imagine they're going to start to go up in the next few laps. So we will uh, likely see all the medium runners on in this session. Aside from uh, Alexio de Capua and Jan Watmir, uh, all the other drivers will have to pit in the next few laps. And I'm interested to see Alexio de Capua actually still out on circuit. Very odd to see on a set of the softs. Yeah, very, very odd. Not too sure uh, why he's going so long. But here he is at the minute, up behind Louis Welsh. And Jan Watmir reeling him in. 
as things stand. Surely, at the end of this lap, we're going to see him in. Jake Benham will be joining behind Beresny and, and Lee, but he's on fresher tyres, so that might give him a little bit of firepower towards the end of the race. De Capua, yeah, as you'd expect, into the pits he comes now to get off those tyres. Let's pick up Barry Burman and that group of cars were waiting to regain the lead of this Grand Prix. So things are about to get interesting for Barry Burman. 8.8 seconds ahead of him before he gets into the traffic. Will he get to them? before they pit or not. He'll be hoping he doesn't because he wouldn't want to be negotiating them with the likes of Alvaro Caraton breathing down his neck as Thomas Ronha sets a brand new fastest lap of the Grand Prix and he is looking very, very strong in what is a net P4 at the minute. He looks very, very quick on the race pace, Dan, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he is still closing up to the rear of Shanika Clay. Of course, he's not quite able to overtake in the DRS train. Someone who did manage to find an overtake is Danny Beresney. He's just overtaken his teammate of Brendan Lee. He's managed, uh, of course, Brendan Lee on the uh, old, on the hard tyres. Uh, likely not a good strategy call from him, and he might see them uh, fall off later on. I imagine Jake Benham is also going to find a way through. Uh, but at this point in the race, it is all about finding a rhythm for these drivers. They can't afford to uh, to get all the life out of these tyres these early because it's still got to go to the end. Uh, we're just over the halfway point at this point in the Grand Prix. I think we're actually on the halfway point. So uh, we really do need to start thinking about settling, to a, settling into a rhythm and looking at the end game and going to the end of this race. And I think that's what the drivers will do. So uh, I'd imagine we're going to start to see a little bit of a lull period between the likes of uh, Barry Burman. Alvaro Caraton and Shanna Clay, Shanna Clay, all those guys fighting. I'd imagine they're going to back off a little bit, but for the drivers who've got little tyres left, uh, they're going to be white hot at the moment. So I'm looking at Time and Shooter, Yoni Tormler as well. Those guys, they'll be starting to scrap with Yano Otmir. Yeah, they sure will. They're all going to be getting involved in that battle. Let's see Brendan Lee then. Let's pick him up. We think it might be the wrong strategy. And he's doing what he didn't want to do, dropping out of one second to Danny Beresley. He was hoping to stay with them and get towed along, wasn't he, Dan? Perhaps at the end of the race, when the medium tyres are starting to die, that might be his moment. But to do that, you really feel he needs to stay within DRS territory and get dragged along, doesn't he? Yeah. Absolutely, at this point. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine in these DRS trains, you just, it is imperative to uh, maintain that DRS gap uh, and, and stay with all the drivers in front because once you lose that gap, it is so difficult to make back and uh, you will fall victim to other drivers later on in the Grand Prix. So if you want to stay, uh, if you want a fighting chance of this race, then you've got to stay in the DRS. Yeah, and he's struggling to do that and he'll be struggling pretty soon to keep the rapid Jake Benham behind him. The man in 14th at the minute, right behind Brendan Lee on those hard tyres. Brendan will be hoping to play the long game and stay within range towards the end of the Grand Prix. But this looks like it's going to be pretty much a formality then. Round the final corner, Brendan Lee, 13th. He's going to be 13th no more pretty soon as we see a pit stop from Ruben Pedreño onto the soft tyre. At, at this stage of the Grand Prix, interesting choice. And Jake Benham breezes past Brendan Lee up into 12th place. And that, at this stage, will be a net P6, I believe, for Jake Benham. Yes, net P6. And through he goes into 12th. Now, can he get within DRS range of Danny Bresney? He's got some work to do to close that gap. He's got a lap pressure tyres to do so. At 1.5 seconds is the gap between himself and Danny Bresney. All he needs is a few good corners in a row against that Ferrari, and then he'll be back within DRS range of the uh, Hungarian. But at this point in the race, he's still in, uh, he's still in that gap. He's not able to take advantage of the DRS, and that is what Brendan Lee has uh, held him up for, I suppose, uh, just to give the advantage to his teammate. A missed strategy call from the Englishman, the two-time esports champion, making his debut in PSGL. It's not going all his way at the moment on the hards at this point, and you'd imagine when all of the medium runners and the hard runner of Jan Ortmir come into the pit lane, uh, then they are going to be uh, right on his rear. And speaking of medium tyres in the pit lane, we got Time and Shooter, the first one into the box. Yeah, in comes Time and Shooter then. So the first man to pull the trigger on the mediums, going for that undercut. He is that man. Let's see what he puts on it. And he's going for a fresh set of softs. So he leaves the pits now. What about Jan Ortmir? We've not spoke about him for a while. Now up in second after all those pit stops. Hunting down the pad man, Louis Welsh. So, when will he make his pit stop, Dan? You presume a little bit later than these medium runners, well into the 20s in terms of pit stop time. Will they leave it as late as lap 25? Eight laps on softs, maybe? Something around that? Or would that be leaving it a little bit too late? Not too sure, 
but it will be one to watch and he will be coming through towards the end of the Grand Prix and hunting down that group of cars from Barry Burman through to Brendan Lee. And Brendan Lee, by the way, fair play to him. He might have lost time to Jake Benham, but he's now within DRS to Jake Benham and within, and Jake Benham's within DRS to Danny Beresney. So he's kind of back in the train despite losing out on that position. So that will work for Brendan Lee if he can stay within that range. He's just in there at the minute at a gap of around nine tenths. As Otmir then rounds the final corner, he'll go on to yet another lap. And when will he make his stop? It can't be yet. It will be soon though. And he will go on to a set of soft tires. Maybe around lap 23, something like that, 24. We'll have to wait and see. Yep. Next medium runners coming into the pit lane. We got uh, Yoni Tormala and Louis Welch. Both of those guys into the box. And a set of the softs fitted onto the pair of their cars. It'd be interesting to see where Louis Welch, the lead medium runner, where he's going to emerge. He's going to be, uh, be well out of the train. And then we'll see where he is in comparison to the likes of Tyman Shooter and Alessio De Capua. He's ahead of De Capua by uh, just a small margin. I think De Capua on the exit of turn number two on up towards turn three. He's going to be challenging onto the rear, but... Uh, He's not going to be able to make a move stick. And I think Louis Welch with the fresher soft tyres. He's got 4.2 seconds of clear air until he catches up to Brendan Lee and the rest of the train. I think Brendan's just about losing DRS to uh, the lead runners at this point. So uh, it will be a struggle for the uh, for the Brits as the Mercedes is hunting him down. Yeah, Louis Welch, he was so strong last week, wasn't he? Fourth position, very impressive for the Padman last time out. And once again, building something very strong here uh, in the first race of the season itself. Soft tyres, 13 laps to go on them, and he's going to be hunting them all down. He's going to be the first man arriving on the scene then. First up will be Brendan Lee on the hard, then Benham, Beresney, Ron Hartley, Canaton and Burman. So this could be another strong showing for Louis Welsh. Could it be enough to win the race? Perhaps it will, or will those soft tyres die off before the very end? He will be another one to watch before the end of the Grand Prix, as the rest of the soft uh, the medium runners make their stops now. That's Yumilio and Haddad. They go on to a set of the uh, soft compound, and you're going to see that Louis Welsh is just ahead of Darren Yumilio, as is De Capua, as he rejoins the racetrack. Only Jarno Opmer then, left on the racetrack, that is yet to make a stop. There he is there, trying something that nobody else in the field has tried, going from the hard tyres at the start and switching on to what we think is going to be a set of the soft compound tyre. Very interesting strategy lining up here. And by the way, I think we've missed it. Barry Burman has lost the lead to Alvaro Caraton. He's got him. Yeah, I just managed to catch the end of that battle. He swooped around the outside at a turn number one. Made the move stick on Barry Burman. I know Thomas Ronhar as well was looking onto the back of Shanika Clay. So they are getting a little bit racy at the top of the order. Alvaro Caraton makes the move for the net lead of this Grand Prix. He wants to take advantage of that clear air that he's got in front of him. 13 seconds to Jan Ockmer, I'd imagine. Uh, maybe in the next two or three laps, then they, uh, then the Dutchman will come into the pit lane. Done really well. Uh, oh, actually, scratch that. He's coming into the pit lane now. Off the set of the hard compound as far as Jan Ockmer. It's going to come into the box to fit a set of the soft to run to the race. So the net lead for Avaro Caraton is no more. He's going to cross the line uh, to begin lap number 22. And he leads this Grand Prix with Barry Broman following in tow behind him. Shanika Clay as well, closing to the rear of the McLaren. We've still got quite a few more laps of racing. 11 laps, or oh, sorry, 12 laps of racing left to go. So don't go anywhere because it is still going to be a brilliant action here. Well, Opnia rejoins down in 12th position then. I thought he would have went a little bit longer or maybe put on the mediums or something like that because in comparison to Louis Welsh, he's not really in a good position here. He's going to only have one lap fresh of tyres than Louis Welsh, but he's, what, three, four cars behind Louis Welsh and a few seconds. So Louis Welsh, rather than Jarno Obi at the minute, looks like the man that's going to be hunting these guys down. He really does look like the strong, strongest driver to challenge these medium runners, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, 2.7 seconds off the back of Brendan Lee. A few laps ago, that was about four. So uh, he is catching at a rate of knots. And once he gets within that one second window, then it could be curtains for some of the drivers at the top of the order. And I think they know that they want to get a move on. I know Danny Beresney is looking onto the rear of Thomas, Thomas Ronha. 
but he's lost a little bit of time in towards a gulp corner. We'll see what these drivers can do down in towards the first corner. Alvaro Caraton leads them onto the main straight. Can we see anyone going for a move in towards the first corner? Barry Broman is closing to the rear of the Williams. He's getting close. Backs off, though, at the last minute. Fastest lap from Yoni Tormano. We have to watch out from him as well. He's in 10th position at the moment. He's got Alessio de Capua on the mediums just in front of him. But it is still all to play for in at PSGL. The top seven fighting for the lead with Louis Welch hunting from behind an eight. Well, here we go, folks. It's starting to get interesting then. All the pit stops are done. The jigsaw pieces are starting to fall into the puzzle. And with 10 to go, this is the situation. The top six, all on medium tyres, all on the same strategy. Brendan Lee trying something different on the hards, trying to make the medium runners fall off at the end of the race in pounds. Meanwhile, you've got Louis Welsh in eighth position, 2.3 off this group. There he is. You can see them just in front, that group of drivers. He's going to be the first man on the scene on a set of softs. Then you've got Alessio de Capua behind that. Yoni Tomlin will be coming quickly, as will Diamond Shooter and Jarno Otmia on the freshest tyres of all. But you've got to say, Otmia's strategy doesn't look like the optimal one. Uh, we could be wrong though, you never know, but I just can't see how that is going to work from there. Louis Welsh looking very strong and he's cut the gap down to 1.8 now to Brendan Lee. Let's go up to that leading train then as they cross the line once again. Caraton, Buraman, Clay and Ronhar, all the top four as they cross the line to start yet another lap. Yeah, fast slap from Jano Otmu and he's looking to go around the outside of Time and Shooter into the first corner. Shooter puts up no fight. Otmu is on a mission. He still does have a few laps fresher tyres than the likes of uh, Tormala and Alessio de Capua who's been on these tyres for quite some time now and that is actually pushing the fin back into... Uh, back in towards Jan Otme, who could look to take advantage very soon at this point. It's down to Torre Vips corner. They go. Uh, no moves being made, but Shanika Clay is closing to the rear of Barry Burman. Or P2 at the moment. Alvaro Caraton leads from Barry Burman. Shanika Clay in third. And I'd imagine all three of these drivers have a, 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 an even shot to win this race. Yeah, I think they do. No doubt about it. They've all got a chance. Uh, Louis Welsh still 1.6. Not catching maybe as quickly as I thought he would on the back of Brendan Lee, given the difference in tyre compound, but he's getting there slowly but surely as we continue to watch these medium runners who are not yet under any serious threat from the likes of Louis Welsh or even Brendan Lee trying something different on the hards. So here we go then, round the final corner to start lap number 25. It's still Alvaro Caraton, Barry Buraman, Shanaka Clay, Thomas Ronhart, uh, Danny Beresney with Jake Benham sandwiched in between the two Ferraris and Brendan Lee next as Bruneman gets closer still to the back of Caraton but still not close enough to make that move as Johnny Tomla now makes a move into turn one unless you're Alessio de Capua he's next to get through and I don't think Otmir will be too far behind him maybe even into turn three not quite he'll set this one up he'll take a wide line in and then slingshot out and climb up the hill Otmir then looking to get into the top ten on the road to Capua, defends aggressively to the inside. Otmir needs to switch to the outside. That's exactly what he does. Tries to go right round the outside of the Capua and on the exit of the corner, it looks like he's got it done. Otmir passes the Capua and moves into the top 10. Next up, Tormala, well, Shinley. Yeah, that's class from Jano Otmir there to go around the outside of Alessio de Capua. Didn't make it easy for him. Fair play to Di Capua, but he has lost that position to Jano Otme and it was almost inevitable with the difference in the tyres but uh, what a move from Jano Otme and uh, he'll be tracking down Yoni Tormala and, uh, and trying to catch up to Louis Welch as well uh, who's now only 1.4 seconds off the back of Brendan Lee he's sniffing that DRS and he's sniffing uh, a, a potential podium position in this race he's pushing with everything he's got he's got 5% left in the battery so it is still all to play for at this moment in time as they file on to lap number 26 Barry Burman close to the back of Alvaro Caraton up to about 200 of a second back from him but he does indeed back out at the end so uh, he is still waiting for the opportune moment in this race to go for it I imagine he's going to wait a few more laps probably lap 31 or 32 that's when he's going to seal the deal yeah it looks like it Danny Perez he looks pretty close behind Thomas Ronhart is he close enough for a move from that far back not quite but they're all beginning to bunch up together Louis Welsh still st stagnant at 1.5 seconds are those soft tyres beginning to fade for him? I really expected him to reel these guys in at quite a rate of knots, but he's not quite making the impact 
anyone expected him to make and, and that's a real shame for him doesn't seem to be working for him and at the minute the man that's making the move and getting quicker and quicker is this man Jarno Altmaier half a second off the back of Tormela and you feel on this lap he might be considering a move but let's move further up the field to the sharp end of the minute and as you can see they're all still following one another round this lap and are we going to see a move maybe look at the line difference there is that's very wide from Alvaro Caraton and Barry Bruneman now senses an opportunity and notice at the last minute there a real difference in the lines and now Barry Bruneman the Iranian driver right up behind Caraton as they cross the line they'll go wheel to wheel down the start finish street Shinaka Clay picking up the double toe here comes the Aston Martin steaming down the inside mugs the pair of them off and what a move that is from Shinaka Clay Barry and Alvaro busy looking at one another Chinaka Klee dies through passes the pair and takes the lead away on this lap what a move on lap 27 the king Shanaka Clay did not come here to play and he's made that move stick beautifully a double overtake on Avara Caraton and Barry Burman that's going to leave a thorn in their sides and they're going to be seeking vengeance on the Aston Martin it now reads the order on lap number 27 as Shanaka Clay Barry Burman Alvaro Caraton Thomas Ronha looking close onto the back of the Williams Danny Beresday as well in the top five Jake Benham as well uh, in sixth Brendan Lee still keeping his nose in and crucially as well uh, in Louis Welch now only seven tenths back he's within DRS of the lead train we'll see what he can do in the next few laps we could see a repeat of what we saw last lap by because now coming out of the final breaking zone and on, up towards a gulp corner turn number 15 we've got Shanika Clay leading from Barry Boroman then Alvaro Caraton in behind Thomas Ronhar as well so what can these guys do as they're leading they're led on to lap number 28 in this Grand Prix can we see a possible opportune moment as Barry Borman closes to the rear of Shanaka Clay. He backs out though. He lifts off the throttle. And that's going to cause a concertina effect. Can we see any moves up the inside? No. No overtakes are being made at this point. But no, there was no there was no real real room at the end. I think Barry Borman, he wanted to hang back for the time being. And we haven't seen anything. So it remains Shanaka Clay, Barry Borman, and Alvaro Carrot on the top three. Yeah, that's very, very close now. Look at that. Brendan Lee now was hanging in there initially. Now he's the man really starting to mount a challenge. He's only two tenths off the back of Jake Benham and really thinks that he might have the tires to start charging through the field. He's played the long game. He's now right there. Louis Welsh is right there as well. Can either of these two on the alternate strategy begin to make things work? Let's wait and see. The top six battling one another and with five laps to go, Brendan Lee, Louis Welsh now starting to move themselves into position. Let's see how they cope going around the final corner. You would get the impression that they might start to have a little bit more traction coming out of these corners. We need to move further up the field though. We need to go to the sharp end because it looks like we might have a move coming here. Cross the line they go, it's still Clay, Burman, and now Alvaro Caraton. Look at Ron Har though, let's pick up him. Very close behind Caraton towards turn one, not close enough. Benham, is he close enough? No, he's not either. Otmir is, he's passed uh, Yoni Tomla into turn one and up into ninth. Next up is the big train, Louis Welsh at the back of it at the minute for Jarno Otmir. Absolutely, he's only 1.7 seconds off and with the amount that these guys are battling, uh, we could see some, uh, some ground being made up by the Flying Dutchman himself, Jarno Otmir. Uh, maybe Louis Welch would uh, try and let, give his teammate DRS and then we can really start to see how the train is affected. We could have a 10 car train for the lead by the end of this race, led by Shanika Clay. I'm seeing a lot of uh, Shakira comments. Uh, it's a very similar name, but Shanika Clay, uh, well, he is moving, uh, he's mo his hips are moving like Shakira and he's doing really nice indeed at this point in this Grand Prix with only uh, four laps to go at the end of this lap. And I think oh, Jake Benham, Benham is looking like he's, uh, yeah, he's trying to go for a move on Beresnay, getting a bit impatient behind the Ferrari. And we could see uh, the young Englishman, uh, not old enough to compete in challenges, fight with a with an esports veteran in Danny Beresnay. Louis Welch as well, catching on to the train. I think he might be the one to go for a move on Brendan Lee as they go on to the start finish straight. Louis Welch following in tandem of the Ferrari car. Can he go for a move in towards the first corner here? He's looking at having a half look up the inside. No, he couldn't get past the DRS train, saving Brendan Lee there, but possibly up the inside. Oh, late in towards turn number three. Slight bit of wheel banging now at the exit in towards turn number 
front four. He's going to get the uphill climb onto Brendan Lee, getting a bit impatient. Here comes Louis Welch now. We're down in towards Torre Vips on this main straight. Can he go around the outside on ben Brendan Lee? Or can he possibly make a switch back move work? As now off the exit of the corner, turn number five. Here they go in towards turn six. Wheel to wheel through turn number seven and eight. Around the outside goes Louis Welch. Sensational stuff we're witnessing here. Brendan Lee contact once again between the pair of them. And he muscles him out the way. Brendan Lee remains in seventh. Louis Welch still stays in eighth. And this opens the door for Jan Watmere in behind. Oh, absolutely incredible. Some of these drivers beginning to get a little bit desperate. Seventh, eighth and ninth. Not really cutting the mustard for them. And they really want to start climbing through the order. Louis Welch is in a fine race up till now. It's almost like he's hit a brick wall and he can't go any higher. And that perhaps is because... You know, he was draining the battery to catch this group, and now he's in a bit of trouble. What about Barry Buraman, man? As we can start, lap 31 now out of 33. Is this the moment he feels like he's going to make his move and maybe take the lead? Yes, it is! Barry Buraman down the inside. The McLaren driver makes it stick on Shinaka Clay, takes the lead away, and back again on lap 31. It's Barry Buraman in the lead of this race, switching one way, then the other, Dan. Absolutely, I can't I can't think of who's gonna come out on top in this race as Barry Burman on lap number 31 He just got three more laps until he is a race winner But there is still potential for other drivers in behind we can't discredit the likes of Alvaro Caraton as well He's kept his nose very clean at this point in the Grand Prix and remember if you pick up a penalty You're gonna go down a number of positions So it is still imperative for these drivers that they remain within the track limit as a uh, lap number 31 Rob along here uh, it is just all a little bit of a waiting game in this second sector very difficult to overtake but once they're unleashed onto that start finish straight there is no telling what can go down as Barry Burman still ahead of Shanika Clay seems like he is actually pulling out a slight yeah. gap to uh, the Aston Martin and that could push him back away of Alvaro Caraton who's looking very close to the rear of Clay and possibly down into towards turn one we can see an opportune move from the Spaniard can he go up the inside possibly we'll have to wait and see as they enter the start finish straight on lap number 32 two laps to go left in this Grand Prix it's going right down to the wire but Shanika Clay stays in second position and they're all hanging back for the time being we've got two laps of racing fun yeah we sure do Caraton really now almost pushing Clay through turn number three and he now fancies a chance but he isn't quite close enough the problem is the car in front is the DRS and it's unable to make the move so Shinaka Glee for a moment looking a little bit slower a little bit on the ragged edge and Alvaro Caraton looked like the one making the move but the DRS saves Clay brings him back within range of Buraman Buraman a big middle sector coming up for him here what can he do it could potentially be a race winning sector it needs to be very very strong doesn't it Dan yeah, absolutely, as it all continues on. Lap number 32, it's coming to the end of this race. A lap and a half of racing left to go. Who are your bets on to win this race? Barry Broman beginning to stretch a slight advantage on Chanaka Clay. These guys still have quite a lot of ERS left in reserve to push on the final lap. It all comes down to this. Chanaka Clay's got to get a move on. As now coming off the exit of Gulp Corner, they go. Barry Broman leads them on to the final lap of this Grand Prix. Lap number 33 of 33. Who can make a move? Who can go for the overtake and be the brave one here? I don't think any of them are close enough. I think Barry Broman has played this to perfection with stretching that gap to Shanika Clay it might not be over though because we do have another DRS zone down and towards Torrey Vips which could be the best opportune moment for Clay to go for the lead of this race as now it's all or nothing for the Aston Martin car but I just don't think he's close enough Andy. I don't think he has either not looking good what about Jarno Watme I think he got a better move on his teammate Louis Welsh into the breaking zone right round the outside he tries to go shoved wide by Louis Welsh the banging wheels the two Mercedes Total Wolf throwing the Bose headphones away in disgust but it looks like Jarno Watmeer's down the inside and he's got it done on Louis Welsh uh, elbows out there between the Mercedes drivers, no love lost, and the pad man has to give way. Otmir up into eighth place, and that looks like as far as he will get, but this is where the story is. He's in form. It's looking like it could be a really good year for Barry Burnaman. He opened January, the start of the year, with a win in the Invitational. That was only a pre-season friendly. This is where the prizes start to get won, and Barry Burnaman continues where he left off in that Invitational. It was a pole position and a victory in that it's a pole position and a victory here tonight he wins the portuguese grand prix the opening race of the
of the season goes to Buraman. He wins from Clay in second, Caraton third, and Ron Hart with a brilliant P4. Beresne, Benham and Lee, fifth, sixth and seventh. Orkney have recovered to eighth. Louis Welch ninth and Yoni Tomala completes the top ten. But here is your winner making the statement once again at the start of 2022. Two wins, two poles. But of course, this is the only one that matters. And Barry Burnaman continues his fine form, Dan. What a performance. Stamping his authority on the PSGL grid. Wasn't really racing last season, of course, fighting for the championship in season 28. And he is back with a vengeance. He's trying to be the pretender to the throne, currently held by Jano Otmir at the moment, down in eighth position. The alternate strategy just did not work out for them today. Uh, all of those guys, that he was actually the highest placing alternate strategy runner. And uh, we there we go, we finish this race. What a, what a Grand Prix we have witnessed. And it is the Iranian coming out on top. Yeah, congratulations to Barry Purnaman, Yoni Tomala, the driver of the day according to the game. Let us know, folks, who is your driver of the day today? We all want to know what you think, but uh, a great performance from Barry Purnaman, who has done it again, did it in the Invitational, and now when it matters, the opening race of the season, pole position, followed up by another victory. He had all the answers to Caraton and Clay, who fought him all the way, but in Portimao, it belongs to Barry Burnamand. He gets the victory and opens the season in style. A fine effort from Janaka Clay and Alvaro Caraton. They just didn't quite have enough in the end to take the victory away. And there is the final results from the opening round of the season. Barry Burnamand, your winner, from Janaka Clay in second and Alvaro Caraton completing the podium. What a performance, though, from Thomas Ronhar, as we mentioned earlier, switching over to the PC only a few weeks ago and against this quality of field delivers a fine P4. Danny Beres name was fifth with Jake Benham sixth and Brendan Lee was seventh. Jan Watmir eighth, Louis Welsh ninth and Yoni Tomala tenth. Thymon Shooter, Daniele Haddad, Yumulo, Pedreño, De Capua, Parnell, Vigang, Van Erben, Warren and Josh Idawu complete the 20 drivers. What a race that was and uh, yeah. Congratulations to Barry <laughs> on that victory, Dan. And uh, oh, stick your camera on, Dan. Stick your camera on. But yeah, yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, well done to Barry Burman uh, on that victory. Very, very strong performance. And uh, you know, he just looks to me at the minute like he's in the form of his life. Uh, fantastic stuff. As we touched on, pole victory in the Invitational, set out his stall, and then delivered a fine performance in the Grand Prix. So, a great win from him. Shinaka Clay came up close, but not quite close enough to get that victory. Looked like he was going to do it, and then that crucial overtake came from Burman. Just a few laps from home to get the job done. And, uh, yeah, Alvaro Caraton, another really solid performance from him too. And Thomas Ronhar, he could be my driver of the day today. What a performance to just turn up on PC in a tier of this uh, quality in Tier 2. Uh, and in a reserve tonight to deliver a performance like that. Very, very impressive in P4. Not quite enough for the podium you predicted he would maybe get, Dan, but a good performance nonetheless from him. Yeah, absolutely. I'm having some, I'm having some issues uh, with my Discord. I think, uh, and if you just tab into Discord, my, my camera should show up. It is on at the moment, but uh, okay. yeah, what a race that was. Uh, it, it was so fun to watch, and despite all the issues that we had, uh, it, was, uh, it was worth the wait, I'd imagine. Yeah, it really was worth the wait. We had a few issues. Uh, apologies for that, folks. Uh, a few bits of lag and, uh, you know, other things. But first first stream, first race of the season, a little bit of rustiness and uh, just getting things right, uh, the issue there. So hopefully we have that all sorted going forward for next week. But, uh, yeah, fantastic race. And, you know, we had to wait a while, Dan, but we got a fantastic Grand Prix. And we got, the you know, the drama we expect, the, the, the closeness of the field that we expect. And, you know, we've got to talk about uh, this man, Barry Burman. I mean, your tip for the championship. I think Connor tipped him as well for the championship. It really is looking like he is going to be the man to beat. That's two races now. I know one was an invitational, but to follow it up again in an even stronger field with the pole and the victory, it, he's looking very, very strong. And, you know, even Yarno, when he's here, is going to have his work cut out. Did not have a, a good race at all tonight, Yarno. But first on Barry, Dan, you must be very impressed. Uh, I am very impressed to say the least, Barry Boromand. Uh, that is two 
two wins and two pole positions in two races. Of course, if you're counting the eSports Invitational, we're actually going to get him in for an interview very soon here. Uh, it, I think he's just in the waiting room. So we'll get to hear from the race winner today. It was uh, quite extraordinary, extraordinary from him with the level of competition as well that uh, he had to face. And he came out on top. Yeah, well, uh, let's try and, uh, get him in for an interview because it was a fine performance. And as you say, uh, very, very impressive. So let's see if we can get a hold of him in a few moments' time. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to him on the victory. Uh, let's try and drag him in. Yeah, there we go. We've got him in. Barry Burnerman, the man in form. What a performance once again. Victory in the Invitational. Follows it up tonight with a victory and a pole position just like last about Barry what a start to the season you must be delighted uh, hello Andy hello Dan uh, hopefully you guys are doing well and uh, whoever watched this race <laughs> I mean um, yeah because after eSport I saw like uh, I did some changes in, in the whole like setups and everything and uh, yeah, I really miss PSGL and when I'm back, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Get like two wins, one from in Invitational and one from the actual races. And yeah, in Quali, uh, I got pulled, but I was a little bit like not happy with myself because wow. uh, yeah, I was, I was quite, I was on a really, really good level, like literally 0.1, but I lost like um, 0.13 in the last sector because I hit the sausage curve. But the end of the last pole position, and yeah, just managed the race with the uh, with the ERS, and yeah, I'm happy to take the win. Yeah, well, I tell you what. Speaking of that qualifying, you know, you, you really came out the blocks at the start of Q3, got a really good lap on the board, that uh, you know, 0.3 straight away, which was a good marker to have. And you know, you, you know, the feeling was in the commentary box, oh, he looks like the man to beat. And then of course you followed it up, and then you needed to follow it up because Shinaka Clay was very, very quick as well. But, you know, that just goes to show you, you seem to be in the form of your life at the minute, Barry, in qualifying. You found a few things after eSports and it seems to be showing. You must be really excited for 2022. Could this be your year? You're, you're looking strong. Uh, yeah, definitely. And yeah, as I said, yeah, point. And if I say something to you, you will be like, like it's so weird. Even in my uh, in my banker lap, I again lost one ten wow. in the last sector. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was it was not not a good session for the last sectors. But yeah, yeah, actually, I will be happy if the eSport will will start right now this year. But yeah, it finished. And but yeah, I, I'm really looking forward, and I'm looking forward to to build myself to get the the experience I need. Um, and yeah, b being ready and ever for the 2022 yeah because uh, i mean you, you started in style mate you have you really have i mean you know that that, that result last week you know it was slightly weaker field but still a very strong field you know perfect way to start pole position as well last week too two poles two wins it's a it's the perfect start so you know really happy with that and to follow that up today really really impressive so just talk us through your race mate i mean what, what how did you feel about your race you know you had to leave it very late to make that move on shanaka and get it done and be decisive but you just seem to have that little bit more in your pocket to pull clear a little bit more ers to just break clear and ensure he wasn't able to fight back at the end didn't you yeah exactly like because in portimo uh, it's so easy to get run out run out of the ers it's just so easy so i i a little bit like drive on the lead and then when i see i have a good pace like i, I can see the the delta and everything and i say that i have a good i see i saw i have a good pace and it's okay let's let's just play like a little bit of game mm -hmm. to to can get some more ers and then i i actually planned to overtake shanaka at like 27 28 so and when i see uh, he was doing it. I said, "Okay, I will. I will charge at ERS more." And then when I got 80 on lap, I think 30, uh, I moved, and then I I knew I had enough ERS to to cover it. Okay. And and why would you go for that earlier move on lap 27, 28? Why would you have preferred that? It would, would do you th do you feel making it then you would still have had enough to defend with, or what's the reason for that? Because usually I, I when I watch a I find that most drivers leave it to two or three before, but you say you were, I find that interesting, you were going to go 27, 28, why, would, why is that? I think, I, I actually think it was not the best ideal okay. thing to, to over, over to 27, 28, so, and actually like lucky things really helped to overtake 30, because you know, I, I didn't know how much Shanaka has ERS, I thought mm -hmm. maybe when I, when I overtake like 27, 28, if it has, 
like so much he will probably again pass me and then i can again pass but yeah i i think in the at the end of the day in that lap 30 i had i had good amount of ers for like three laps 80 percent it's all you need to be fair mm -hmm. and yeah i think i think even like it was lucky but like lap 30 was the ideal one yeah yeah i think i think it worked out around the right time just another quick question on strategy uh barry we, we, we did a lot of difference in strategy today obviously those outside the top 10 a lot of them went for the medium but we found it very interesting that Yarno went for the hard were, was there any point in qualifying where you maybe thought i'd maybe consider a medium or a hard or or were you always clear in your mind that the soft was the way to go uh, did Yarno went on yeah, hard hard first didn't it yeah i found it very strange yeah I, I don't know maybe i don't know because uh when i i i knew i will do soft medium or medium soft but it's a yeah, the thing was, uh, we really didn't knew like what tire should be used, and then uh, like for the Q2, I said, okay, I'll do like one medium lap for a banker, and then I will see if it's if it's possible to go because you know when you have medium, you have really like you can you can play a lot of games with it, like you know you have you have lots in your hands, and then. When I see, I, I did a, a normal lap on medium, and then when I see, okay, everyone is improving, I said, okay, this is time for stuff. And I knew, like, I have enough pace to even without, uh, like, with one lap, I could make it. So, yeah, I did this to be, to be like, safe, mm -hmm. to be, if it's possible, if everyone goes for medium, so I will go on medium. So, if everyone's going on soft, like, I, I'm speaking, like, top 10. Yeah. And then, yeah, I, I will go on soft. And then, yeah, I did that. And then for the Q3... Yeah, as I said, I just just not can can get to to do that last sector. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from because if more people go on softs and you're at the front at the end of the race, you get more of a buffer, don't you? Because there's more cars for those medium guys to overtake. So I can understand where you're coming from. It's a real balancing act. It's almost like in that Q2 session, you've just got to see how it goes and then wait to the end of the session. So yeah, it's a really tough one to balance. But congratulations, Barry, you got it right for the second week in a row and took home the victory so well done dan have, have you got any questions for barry i think you've i think you've covered all bases of uh one i want what i wanted to ask but uh i'd just like to say a, a personal congratulations to you barry you know uh i've tipped you as my uh my championship winner so uh you better not be disappointing me here but uh really well done today and i'm wishing the the uh the best for the rest of the season for yeah. you yeah thank you guys thank you for the commentating and yeah i will try to won't disappoint at you <laughs> and, and barry one more question we go to silverstone next week are you a fan of that circuit what, how are you feeling ahead of that one uh just going for another this week if if it's i will just do my best and yeah if i can do that yeah i will just go for a pole and p1 <laughs> of course you're making it look pretty easy at the minute mate so hopefully you can make it a hat trick and uh, go for three wins and three pole positions but congratulations mate and we'll hopefully see you next week in the interview room thank you so much and good night everyone see ya yeah well dan <laughs> there having a chat with us oh that's the wrong screen let's get the right one yeah dan <laughs> having a chat with us there and he seems to be oh sorry i've got the uh need to full screen that my apologies yeah, but Barry Bunneman there, he's, yeah, he seems very confident. He's had a really good start to the season. And, uh, you know, he's he's very happy at the minute. And, you know, you know, you hear him in his voice there. Yeah, just go for it again. Go for the hat-trick, pole position and victory. He seems very confident and he's looking very strong, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He uh, really seems to be pleased with himself. But I don't think he's letting himself be proud yet. I think he is going to keep pushing throughout this season. And uh, he knows that he's got more challenges coming up of course uh, a bit of an off day for uh, possibly one of his main rivals in Jano Otmir but I certainly think he's going to bounce back in the future so Barry's not going to take the foot off the off the uh, off the gas he's really going to try and keep pushing and uh, go for the championship and I found something very interesting in that interview one quote he said he's found a few things since esports e and it's showing isn't it he's found it's almost like he's gone up a level so maybe something in the setup or something in his driving style he's spotted and it's as if he's gone on to another level and you really do start to feel this could be his year. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really uh, I'm really starting to see where that confidence is coming from, from Barry. And uh, I'm certainly starting to really get the hype that he is getting. And I uh, I completely agree with it. I know there's the uh, hashtag back Barry uh, on, on Twitter going around at the moment. And you know what? That That's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, that was a really good performance from him. And I want to speak about 
Thomas Ronha because uh, fourth today didn't quite get the podium that you were looking for, Dan. Just a fraction away. But, uh, you know, we spoke about it earlier on, what a performance in qualifying. But he backed it up in the race, you know, uh, straight into a field like this. Two weeks on the PC, great performance. I'm guessing he's your driver of the day, is he? I, 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 he's certainly up there. Okay. I certainly do think Thomas Ronha, is, uh, he's put in a brilliant performance in this race. And uh, I think if he can continue that in F2 and in F1, uh, if he is ever filling in for any other drivers, then I really do see a bright future for him. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, fine performance from him. Shinaka Clay, second. Third for Alvaro Canaton. Very, very close to, you know, overturning Barry Burnham in that race. They were so close in qualifying. Almost toppled him, but as you hear from Barry there, he felt he could have done a point one, but you know, we don't know what Shinaka could have done. We've not heard from him or Alvaro, but they were really, really strong in that race and had their chances to, to win it too. But Shinaka, he'll be disappointed. He was leading on lap 30, lost that position. and. You know, he just maybe felt he could have got him back in the closing laps, but he just didn't have that ERS to repass, and Barry just outsmarted him, didn't he, in that occasion, Dan? Uh, I would say that is a bit of a knock to uh, Shanika Clay, but uh, it certainly is not it's not anything to get down about. You know, he'd still put in a, uh, an exemplary performance uh, today and certainly uh, setting himself up for a great season in F1. Yeah, well, it should be a great season. It's been a fantastic opening race. I'll show you guys the calendar once more. There you go, folks. 15 rounds ahead of us. The first one down, Barry Burnham had the winner. Be sure to join us again next week, folks. Myself and Dan will be here for the action. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen tonight, be sure to like and subscribe. We've got 15 races ahead of the drivers. Be sure to join us next Wednesday night, the 26th of January. We head to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. But that is all from myself and that is all from Dan Field tonight. Be sure to join us again next week, next Wednesday at 7pm for some more PC Tier 1 action. Good night.